and the Force is what gives the Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, it penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Okay, hello everyone, this is Cade from the Legends Library, here as always, except for the past couple of videos, with Tristan. Hi, how are you? <laughs> well, I'm just great. It's been, I think, four, eight months since our last Legacy Review, and um, we overshot the anniversary of the start of the Legacy Review by uh, two weeks. It's so it's over a year to finish this. Well, to get to 41 issues in. Yep. <laughs> yeah. God. Uh, it, it's a process. Uh, me with a lot of trauma. True. I spent seven months recovering. That's a good point. It does oh, take a long time fine. to recover for something like that. But correct, we are back. So... First video that we've done together since January, so about half a year, and that was our Rise of Skywalker review. Since then, you guys have been stuck with me solo, but thankfully Tristan is back, as is the Legacy Review. And without a further ado, we are just going to hop right into issue 32. Um, I'm asleep. Uh, <laughs> so am I. Honestly, I'm... I, I don't give a shit about any of the Mon Calamari stuff. Like, it was cool at first. All right, we're expanding the galaxy a bit. But now it's just... I don't remember any of these characters' names. I don't really want to. <laughs> well, the only two people that really... I mean, as far as I remember, that show up again are the Imperial Knights. Um, yes. Uh, who get really mad if you uh, if you call them Jedi. Yes. They're very dimensional characters. I Starting off with a really shitty cover, because it's more CGI stuff. I don't know why this was a trend at the time. Yeah, that one's... The, the cover for 32 is not terrible. No, it's not. Well, it works a little bit, because they're underwater, and then you get the issues after this, and it's just... No. But this is one of the not horrible ones. Yeah, but it starts off, and the Mon Calls are running away from the underwater Imperial submarine ships, I guess. And there's like a big crab walker because it, it's they're on the, on the ocean, <laughs> so they gotta have crab. <laughs> it, it's literally just a scarab from Halo. It's a actually, yeah. Now that I'm looking at it, yeah, that that, that does look just like a scarab. Which uh, this would be coming. Yeah, this probably would have been coming out like around the same time as Halo 3. Yes, yeah, so they just thought it was cool and figured, hey. <laughs> True. Yeah. And if you take some of these shots of, like, the Imperial, like, submarine scuba ship things, I don't know what the hell you would call those. Subs? Submarines? Sure. I don't know. Some of them, they look like they're literally just in space with the way they're drawn sometimes, which... But they also kind of look like... Sith fighters from KOTOR. Ooh, true, which would make sense. Because um, those ships are neat. Um, but as the Empire is blowing up a bunch of Mon Calamari citizens that have no defenses, mm -hmm. the Mon Calamari Rangers show up, and they, uh, along with the two Imperial Knights, uh, just basically just decimate the Imperials. We're just getting to the Clone Wars action scenes, really. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, they're just, they go in, they blow stuff up, there's a, we discussed this right before we started recording, but there's a snake man who is alive for one, two, three, four, five panels, and then he's dead. And they give him, they get the, they give the Imperial Knights some this weird character arc thing where he's talking about, like, loyalties and stuff, and I get where they're going with it, because... I haven't. You've read this before, and I have not. And Rowan Phil seems to type to be slipping so far. So I, I think I understand maybe where they could be foreshadowing with this. But 
there's a lot better ways to do this than one character who he, I don't think I've ever seen before who dies. And how many panels did you say? Five. Five, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's five panels of him being alive, and that counts the one where the blaster bolt is, like, about to hit his chest. Of course. Very detailed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then they, uh... They cut to their, like, rendezvous point, and they're having a discussion about what they should do, and the Imperial Knight is, like, talking about how they need to repair a fortress and not, like, save their, like, civilians, which seems like a very Imperial thing to say. Of course. Just in case you needed needed a reminder that the Empire still aren't, like, good guys, per se. (laughs) Not as bad as the Sith. Um... I will say, I really like this group of troopers in this. About the Ellen design. Oh, with their, with their neat little, like, shoulder wing things. Yes, I really like them. Yeah. They kind of have, like, a... Uh... They look like scout troopers. Oh, uh, that's that's what it was, yeah, the scout trooper helmets. For some reason, I was drawing a blank. But yeah, they have, like, the scout trooper helmets. Which, I mean, technically, I guess would make sense. You can still scout underwater, I guess. Of course. So, uh... But no, they're doing that... Discussing that, and they, um, what do they decide to do? Uh, I think we're talking, the, the, the Imperial Knight's talking about, like, leaving, or, no, wait, no, is that later? That might be later. <laughs> you can tell this is really compelling stuff that we're reading. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not one of the better ones, but then we do get to cut to the neat little old, uh, the, uh, the, like, abyss, or whatever, and, uh, um... Oh god, the Quarren. Uh, Darth Azard and uh, the Godel. In the, or not the Godel. Gibbon. The Gibbon. Yeah, the aquatic at a AT-AT. Yes. And uh, they get a cool like Sith sorcery scene where they summon up the uh, Sea Leviathan, which is pretty neat. I really like this scene, actually, because you hear a lot about Leviathans, and it I don't know if you've seen them, if you've read Tales. Do you see Leviathans in Tales? Mm, I don't think so. I think the first time you see one is in... I think it's literally it's called Jedi Academy Leviathan. It might be. But the, the, it's talked about... It, I think it's actually talked about more than you actually see it. But it, it is cool to see them here. Yeah, it looks neat. It looks like a spooky underwater monster that... it. Like force drains the Mon Calamari, which is really depressing because it, it's just like a prisoner camp that they. <laughs> the, it's the, they, they, the fish people. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, one interesting thing here I wanted to point out where uh, the Given Sith is talking to Azard and he's like, uh, Darth Warlock is talking about Leviathans that we can use and we might conjure one, except. Malady won't share any of her knowledge, which I thought was really Sith-like of her, which is pretty out of place for the one Sith. Yeah, well, it's um, it's been pretty like established, like in the the previous volumes that uh, um, like Malady's talking with Nile about how like they're pretty much outsiders within the Order, mm-hmm. and they're kind of buddying up. Because, see, it's 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 kind of like shown and implied that they have like all these um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ambitions like for themselves besides yeah. just like the big grand goal of uh, Crate's goal. She's like almost venturing on like treason of the ideals of like the one Sith, which is, I think is really interesting. Yeah, no, like that. That's why those are the two. That's like the two out of like the four. Or five, uh, one Sith characters that really, uh, like stand out, like especially. Oh, yeah, definitely. But yeah, no. Then this issue ends, and they're talking about uh, basically just how they're going to use the Sea Leviathan to, you know, yeet on the on the Mon Cal. <laughs> I'll have the Mon Cal, Mari. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, and the, but then we do go to issue thirty three, which is another CGI cover, and this one does not look as good. I agree. <laughs> definitely does not. 
like the the leviathan's head is coming from like a weird angle and its body is colored like in a different texture than its head and then there's the big squid the big squid <laughs> big squid i think the altar um, looks fine and the lightsaber i guess looks okay i take it back the lightsaber doesn't look too great well, the way it looks reminds me of uh, Kit Fisto's from the micro series when he goes underwater. Oh, no, it gets all like fun. whooshy. The hilt is weird. Oh yeah. Um. Oh no, there's more squid. I didn't notice the. <laughs> yeah, there's there's more squid in the background. Yeah, I need to scroll down. I can't look at this anymore. <laughs> um. Very dated. Yeah. No. So there. Uh. Then it cuts to at the beginning. There's some on call rangers, uh, putzing around, probably. Looking for what are they looking for? Oh, a imperial fortress that attacked refugees, and they run into the uh, the Leviathan, which makes um, mincemeat of them. Yeah, they just die, <laughs> or one of them does, and the other one gets away. One of them does, and the other one gets away because he's leading it away from them. But um, the Given and uh, Azara are talking about how they want to follow them, so they can just eat all the Mon Calamari where their base is. Yeah, which is it's a, it's a pretty good plan. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it is. And it's pretty effective, but uh, I, I don't think I have any more commentary with these guys. Uh, I like that um, that the Given, he's wearing like because uh, it, it, they, they have a conversation um, because the given is a smith is a Sith. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, the the the, the scientist thing. Yeah, because he, because he's a scientist, so he's not really like a. He's naturally skeptical and uh, not very combat prone. Yeah, so I I like that they point that out. Um. I, yeah, the exact wording here is uh, I was born on Korriban too. Uh, Lord Azard, I'm as much a Sith as you. Not every one of us is called upon to be a warrior or earn the title of Darth. Um, which I like because uh, for some reason people just think that everybody in the one Sith gets to be a Darth, which isn't true. No, it's not. And, and I, I guess Darth comes with the tattoos. Mm, that would make or, sense. Or tattoos come with Darth. I, I think that's how it works. Because K didn't get his, I think he got like one Sith tattoo. In his... It's yeah, he, I think he gets just a couple on like his wrists and his arms. Yeah, and I think when you get the title, you just go full red and black. Which uh, mm. I think there is a given Sith later or in the background of an earlier issue that actually has the tattoos. Yes. Also, the the Givens is uh, his name is Vol Eisen. I can't remember. For some reason, I don't think they've like referenced his name at all in the series or in the couple issues yet. But I'm pretty sure he's in some other ones. But it's Vol Eisen. I think he is too. I think he actually. I think I may have sworn to myself. But I know he fights Kate at one point. I think. Uh, I think that. I think. I think that's later. <laughs> um, it is. Uh, but yeah, no. So that does happen, and then it cuts over to um. Master Sind, the uh, the older of the two Imperial Knights, and he's talking with Fel, and he, he's basically telling Fel that he has to just pull off of, of uh, Dak because they need him ASAP back on Bastion. And there's his, uh, his Mon Call buddy standing outside, and he's eavesdropping, and he's, well, pretty pretty not happy about it. Because, I, I mean, I can, I can totally see where he's coming from, yeah. because the Mon Call Mari are getting literally genocided. And uh, the Imperial Knights don't want to do anything for it. Because he's not a Jedi, Kay. <laughs> I'm not a Jedi! Oh, he says it again not. here on, on one of the pages. I'm not a Jedi! <laughs> Imperial Knights believe that we serve the Force by serving the Empire. I... Luckily, if they I get attacked, me. so he has to stay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it just forces his hand, so lucky that happens. And they they keep arguing as it's going, like, on their way to attack him. And, uh... They, they bring up the... debate on whether or not to fight them and, like, all die, or, like, we can just run away and let the people they're chasing die. 
it, it's like how essential leaders are and what leaders are allowed to do and they like if they can let the people they're fighting for die and if they still have a cause for it which is a lot more credit than these issues deserve <laughs> but... yeah it's true um but then i do like at the end um sind does admit that he's like staying to fight because he's buddies with tankar the mon calamari and I also just realized, like, looking at some of these scenes, that the Mon Calamari are dressed in, like, gold armor. It's a little garish. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna stick out in the ocean, but, uh... But no, so then the they start attacking the Leviathan along with the, uh... The floating at -AT. <laughs> It looks ridiculous, I love it. It, it does, it's... <laughs> I like that the Empire is just, like, so ingrained in their things that they just... They probably have, like, an air at, -AT and a and a water at, -AT. Yeah. <laughs> They just have one for every um, every single possible, like, uh, biome. The desert at, -AT. Yeah. <laughs> Screw it, just use the same design. But yeah, so basically, um, Sind and Tankar, the Mon Calamari just plan to bring the Leviathan over to a rift where I guess the devil squids live, which are basically just giant squids. Yeah, they're just cracking octa... They look like Corrin, actually. Like, the way that... I was gonna say, like... That must suck for the Corrin to just have, like, their... It's, it's basically just a giant corn head. Yeah. <laughs> which... I'm starting to feel bad for the Corrin, because they... The planet is named after the, after the Mon Cal, unless you call it Doc or whatever. Yeah, Corn which they do almost exclusively in this series. Yeah, and the Quarren, I, I, you know, I don't believe, I blame them for allying with the Separatists in the Clone Wars, because I think they get shafted. Yeah, I'm pretty sure throughout history they just they have just gotten shafted. Um but we do get a cool scene with uh, Sind. He's riding on one of the devil squids because he just happens to have like a a harness for one of them. Of course, all, all of this does remind me of the Kid Fisto stuff from two thousand three. So I'm kind of a sucker for all the combat here. It's really it's yeah, no, interesting. It's really cool and unique to have all this like underwater combat. Um, but I like that he's using uh, he's using Beast Trick to like trick all these squids to just. Uh, well, they basically, he hops on its back, and he kind of, well, he must be floating around, and he's like, I, like, I don't, I don't know what he's trying to do on the Leviathan's back, if he's, like, breaking all of its, like, life suckers or whatever, but eventually the squids all just, like, drag it down into, like, a big, yeah, the, oh god, the, a, the, a ravine? Well, it's not a ravine, because it's underwater. The conveniently oh not getting drained to death squids can drag him down into a cavern, ravine, whatever. Trench. Well, see, I think the big thing with that is, um... Uh... Because they kind of mentioned it a, a little bit earlier, is that, um... Like, it requires time to get them, like, to get their, like, the, uh, Volison and the Leviathan's mind to sync up. So... Maybe he couldn't get it to sync up on the squids. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, or I guess like it. I mean, it's. It's okay. They're like, too far it, away from the life suckers. Or it could be that uh, the uh, the two Sith are kind of preoccupied with trying not to die. That's also it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or I also like to kind of have the image in my mind that the Leviathan is just kind of like a big one track kind of monster thing where it only cares about killing the mon calamari mm -hmm. that's also true. and then by, and then by the time it registers the threat of the squids it's it's already too late and there's also probably just way more squids than there are uh sea leviathan that is true you would yeah, so, that a lot uh, than the issue <laughs> and that's all just literally just extra extrapolation but yes. who cares it's the DAC issues <laughs> um so the aquatic ATAT loses its head and lands, and the Sith do get. I do like their exchange in here because it sort of shows the difference between the one Sith and I think literally any other organization of the Sith, including the Brotherhood of Darkness. Um, 
but Azard is like borderline unconscious and he's like stabbed through his arm. And Izo is, is that his name? Did you say? Aizen. Aizen. Ball Aizen. Uh, Aizen is able to get Azard's lightsaber and free him. And then just like burst glass open with the force. Yeah, and then they swim presumably miles up and their heads don't explode from the pressure. <laughs> I think it has Which is good... obviously is like they probably just use the force. Of that and like um uh, Azard is a quarren, so Oh that's like... true, that's yeah, that's a good point. And uh Given can actually I think withstand vacuum of space. So like Oh they don't even... I, I did not know that. Yeah, I um I have autistic <laughs> level knowledge of this shit. <laughs> like, I, I can't tell you anything about real history, but given biology, I got you. Well, the, yeah, it came in handy. But I also would like to note that uh, Azard's lightsaber is not Yorick Coral. He's, I think him and Strife are currently the only two... Oh, besides that one random uh, one Sith that tried to uh, assassinate Rowan uh, Burfell, yeah. So, so far there is a whopping three non uh, York Coral lightsabers in the one set. And Azard's lightsaber also looks like uh, Maul's from the Visionary? Is it Visionary? Comic? Where he comes I back don't... with like robot legs. Oh, the Old Wounds. Yes, Old Wounds. Because uh, it has like a slight curvature to it and the two emitters on each side. Hmm. Huh. I didn't know that. I haven't read that that little comic book for for a long time. <sighs> You're probably better off. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's not bad. I, don't, I won't say that. It's been a yeah, time. but uh, they swim up and then um, the day is saved thanks to the day is saved. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Sin's basically uh, he basically lets Fel know that they resurrected a. Uh, see Leviathan, and that they might bring a land one back as well. And so, like, Bash needs to walk out, and then he basically just has to be, uh... He basically just gets told that he has to go back. But he can't go back, so... It, he's saying he has to stay until it's not impossible for him to leave, Doc. So, yeah, so... For now, he's... So back. basically... Uh... The lads are still back together, so. Yay! <laughs> but it's fine because issue thirty-four has uh, Darth Strife on the cover. Uh, that we care about. <laughs> looking, yeah, looking, looking like something out of like a horror film, and it's not CG. No, it actually looks. This is probably one of my favorite covers that we've gotten to so far. It's oh, really? Very nicely drawn. Well, it's really nicely drawn. It's just. I mean, I don't give a shit about Strife, but <laughs> it just looks nice. Yeah. Like... yeah, and we get to start off, and it's got some cool... Uh, Warlock is on Korriban, looking at the, uh, air quotes, dead body of uh, Darth Krayt in the little stasis chamber. For all intents and purposes, dead. Except for one difference. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> they're all... Well, the difference is that... Uh, Great, still alive. Corbin, <laughs> uh, uh, which I'm glad they have like a base on Corbin because I, it ties them back to the old roots. But uh, Crate's in stasis still, and he's being air quotes kept alive. Crate's just dead, isn't he? <laughs> well, I think at this point he is actually like he's straight up dead. Yeah, he he's dead. Uh, his body, yeah, concealing his death. Yeah, Kreitz is straight up dead, and Warlock's pretending that the, the stasis field affects his connection to the Force, so that's why the other Sith can't feel his presence. Yep. Um, but yeah, and he, of course, as it was established uh, in the last issues where we saw him, where he threw Kreitz, uh into death with Force Light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kreitz just falls off a ledge, still alive, and then Warlock just blasting. Yeah, he gives him the the ultimate vibe check. <laughs> oh, but after, uh, do you have anything else with Warlock and Crate? 
Um, that I really like the artwork. Oh, me too. I. It kind of reminds me of Phantom Menace, but it's also hey. like stone. I, I like the plasma running through it, but the stone also reminds me of Korriban and like uh, Jedi Academy and stuff. Yeah, it's nice. There's a there's a big arrow on the platform. Yes, it's kind of just extra. Um, but yeah, no, it's literally just a little. Um, it's literally just one page that they put in, just so that the way they could summarize what happened. But then it cuts over to Kifex, and the Minoc and their crew are flying uh, back to Bantha. So that way he can save Elzenre, because she got, uh, yeah, she got fried too, yeah. along with Ray. Uh, and yeah, she's barely alive. Cade's keeping her alive with a uh, dark transfer, and. And Kate's going through his normal shit where he can't let go of anyone. No, he cannot. And, it, like, Alzen is literally even telling him, she's just like, uh, please just let me die. It's fine. <laughs> please, I'm a, I'm, I'm a literal French fry, please. <laughs> uh, so we cut to Bantha. And he's talking to Kifar, and uh, this is actually... Quinlan Voss's descendant, I think? Uh, it's something like that. Or, um, either he... Does, does Quinlan have any other family? Well, yeah, because he had an aunt. Who died, right? Yeah, so it's very... I mean, it could just be like a relative, because uh, she just... It could be a um, relative, could be... Great great granddaughter of Corto Voss. Or his uh, daughter of his cousin, uh, yeah. Joe Voss. Joe <laughs> okay. Voss. Um, but no, it's because it, because uh, Bantha's wife is uh, a former Voss as well. So they're trying to get out how to sort out uh, Aslan Ray not dying. Yeah, uh, they have a very Atten Rand esque landing. Okay. <laughs> they just try to crash because of like storms <laughs> around Kifa. Uh, yeah, and they uh, they land. They come out. Um, Kate is very angry and Sithy. He's yeah. He's getting his nice red Sith eyes. Because excellently, excellently with his Darth Vader pants, but uh. It, it's talked about how there's a bond between healer and patient, and how the patient has to want to live. But we found out earlier that Aslan Ray is like completely comfortable with dying, and Cade is just denying the will of the Force by keeping her alive. Yeah, but uh, Cade basically just gets around the question by answering, uh, nobody wants to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which... That is true, except for Alzen Ray. Yeah, everyone who is who has accepted that she will die. <laughs> and uh, Cade passes out from, assumingly, like the exertion of, uh, like going through that to keep her alive, which I can't imagine is anything but exhausting. And with how long hyperspace travel can be, like maybe well, hours. I, I, hyperspace travel is. Takes exactly as long as the plot needs it to. Of course, as has been the case <laughs> for all of Star Wars history. Naturally. <laughs> um, um, but no, then he has a nice little. What was that? He passes out from exhaustion and mm -hmm. going to the dream sequence. Yeah, there's like a. It's like a little one-page dream where he's, uh, like cuddling up with Alzin, and then it cuts to like he relives the moment of. Uh, of her getting zapped. Along with and, her, uh, yeah, they're just both getting fried. Yeah, and then Crate it has like a big spooky heal me like thing, which yes. And uh, Kate wakes up next to Delilah, who is honestly way too good for him. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, so they have their little conversation uh presumably they had this scene so that they could show off Cade's six pack 
course. And then he's watching as uh, Drew is healing Alzin. Kate is surprisingly fit for a druggie. And, like, he's not emaciated, he's just... Kate's pretty... Well, I mean... <laughs> I mean, they must have some really good... They, they just must have a good food store on the Minoc. Yeah. That or Jedi Hacks. Je oh, of course. It, it's, it has to be Jedi Hacks. But, uh... <laughs> he and uh, Delilah Blue talk a lot, and uh, they're talking about jealousy and how it's not a Zeltron concept. Apparently. I, I, I'm not sure how true that is. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure either, but it, I mean, for all I know, it definitely could be. I'm not, I'm not a Zeltron expert by any Sorry, means. I only, I'm not only, a, I'm only an expert in Given. But, uh, oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. He has a, oh, you have your doctorate in Given, but uh, not, not a general knowledge. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. No, sorry, I didn't take a minor in Zeltron. But Ooh. Kate's talking with Vance about his promise because he kind of made a screw. He made Vance take a screwed up promise to treat Allison, even though she doesn't want to die, and Kate is just incapable of letting people go. He sort of has the same problem as Anakin, except it's handled a lot better. Yeah. I, I could definitely see that. Um, and Kate... Well, I guess they do come from like a pretty similar like childhood tragedy. Uh, well, Anakin wasn't really a child, but he was... How old was Anakin in episode 2 again? Not old enough. Uh, 19? I think it was 19. Yeah, I, I, I always think 19. is. Uh, yeah, it's 19. Uh, so he's 19 when his mother dies, and Kate is ten. a little... No, he's not 10. Because he's... I think he's 11? No, 14? 14, I think he is. Because... Mm -hmm. But he, he's, you know, just a few years younger than Anakin when his childhood tragedy happens, which I think is, given the magnitude of it, is just worse than Anakin's because he has to witness the whole Jedi Order die, as, whereas Anakin witnesses one person die, so. It's sort of like watching either, like, one family member die versus, like, your entire family. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good way to put it. And so they have their argument, and... Uh, We see R2 with pancakes. Yeah, R2's making a pancake. I was also going to uh, point out that uh, Kate is trying to get inside to help them oh, yeah. help Elvin, and uh, Bantha just says no, and that they're going to save her, but it's going to be without Kate. So then he goes to presumably eats R2, R2-D2's delicious pancakes. Yes, and Sin is eating them with fruit, which I really appreciate. Honestly, I, I would eat R2's pancakes. They look really good. Yeah, they do look really good. Um, oh, and also, uh, and, and yeah, he's yeah he, he's well. By the time like the next, it goes from one panel. It's got like nine or ten pancakes. He's already down to five. So he's he's maybe they maybe they don't have a lot of food on the Minoc. Maybe not. <laughs> and then he's down to three in the last one. <laughs> and then he, yeah, and then he's down to three. All the while, and of course, um, as we are as it cuts over to. Darius, and he's talking about banging the one sister or of the the two kids he's talking with because he's disgusting. Of course. Um. But no, uh, Cade shows up, has some cough. There, he is calf, not coffee. That would be silly. It's totally different. It's very different. Very different. Than not coffee. like hot chocolate. It's just straight up hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tron Trilogy. Tron Trilogy, God. Um, so yeah, but then, uh, basically, uh, Kate and Dry just, they just talk about how they're just gonna go blow off steam in town. By doing a bunch of illegal shit. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is the best way to blow off steam, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, we if... cut to Darth Strife on Korriban, who's in stasis in, like, a back-to-tank. Yep, and he has a uh, Darth Cyan moment. Yep, he just bursts out of it. Uh, <laughs> surprisingly, doesn't kill the Doctor. Who... Yeah, thankfully, he ha also has a loincloth on. Yes, thank God. <laughs> who is... Strife, is... Strife is also ripped. Um... Again, Force Hacks. Can't think of the species name, but they're also like one of the Separatist species. Isn't I'm pretty sure he's just... 
I'm pretty sure he's just a human. Oh, not Strife. Uh, the Doctor. Oh, oh, the Doctor. I was like, uh, st yeah, Strife's a human. He's just red. Yeah. <laughs> they show not um, unlike not unlike myself age. after the Fourth of July oh, with yeah. my sunburn. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I have no idea what the species of the Doctor is. He has no lines except to point at the door. Yep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's one of the separatist species, and I've never liked them either. And they're, they're just really hmm. gross. They have, like, stuff on top of their head. It's nasty. But, uh... Strife is, like, stomping to go see Crate and uh, Warlock, but... And, and he... He's in such a huff, he doesn't even bother to put on, like, a, a, a medical robe. He just walks up in his loincloth. Yep. <laughs> and Probably, again, because he's he's ripped and he knows it, so he, he just wants to show off. Honestly, I would, too. And he runs into uh, Warlock's daughter, whose name at the moment escapes me. I don't remember. I, I think Warlock may say it later, but she's in line to become the next Darth Warlock. Yes, and uh, they have a little fight, and uh... Sarai is her name. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and she uh, they kind of have like a little stalemate. Like I like the little thing where like she has him in a force choke, and he says that you're not the only one with power, and then he puts her in a force choke, mm -hmm. and then they keep going along with it, and then uh, and then Warlock walks out after she like ragdolls him a little bit. Yeah. Which I kind of like because she's not a full, she's not a Darth yet, but she is Warlock's daughter, and Warlock himself is probably the most ambitious Sith in the One Sith aside from Crate. Well, obviously he he fried his master. Yeah, well, at this time he is the most ambitious Sith <laughs> because Crate's dead. It's <laughs> um, true. Which uh, training an apprentice to be better than the rank of file of. Uh, your typical Darth is... It makes sense to me. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially if it's someone like Warlock, who's had, like... Uh... Had these ambitions and everything. But he finally, uh... He finally comes out and puts the fight on hold and finally gives uh, Strife a cloak. Something to wrap himself in. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he... They get to go in, and this is where he basically has the explanation of how uh, none of the Sith can feel Crate while he's in the stasis chamber. Definitely. It's not because he's dead. No, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> um, but he basically just fills him in on how, uh, look at me, I'm the captain now. Yeah, which, I don't think I've commented on this before, but I really like what I'm Oh yeah, no, it's really good. It's I mean, he's a Chagrin, but red. Yeah, and uh, I, I like his tattoo palette a lot. I like when Sith tattoos, like, cover your eyes. You get the whole... Oh, the mascara mall. look. Yeah, you get the mall smoky eye to the extreme look. And uh, his the, robes uh, also... It, yeah, it, he's kind of... It's, it's kind of more like... It looks more... Well, it, it, please pardon the pun, but it looks more warlocky. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, but no, there. Yeah, he has he has a really good looking design, and I like Chagrins, So me too. More uh, more species diversity. I like it. Yeah, they like the comics uh, at this time period did a really good job of like including like just everything. Like 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 when they were writing up ideas for characters, I I like to imagine that they were just sitting back with like darts, throwing them at a dartboard <laughs> that just had like species names everywhere. Yeah, there's actually a Mew that shows up later, which really surprised me because I'm very rare to see. Yeah, that's 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 true. There is one of those, but then we do cut from Corban back to uh, Kifex, and they're working on Alzen still, and uh, she's and uh, not doing too hard. <laughs> yeah, Drew mentions that it's almost like she doesn't want to live. Hmm. hmm. And she mentions that how even if like they could save her in order for her to live, for the rest of her life she would have to be bathed in Bacta. And then she even says, "No, we have to just you know let her go. We can't do anything more." 
But then Bantha says, no, he promised Cade. And that he even mentions that he's seen uh, too much, like, death of people he cares about. Yeah, you sort of get, like, Bantha's almost enabling Cade, but at the same time, since they are related, he doesn't want... They, I mean, they're family, and he doesn't want Cade to lose anybody else. Yeah, and there's also the thing on the bottom of the page where he <laughs> he says that Alzen told Cade she wants to live. Yeah, of course. So. It, it it also doesn't help that Cade is uh, a big liar. fat liar. <laughs> yeah. Again, he didn't he didn't he didn't really lie, but he definitely did not tell the truth. He was not being direct at all. They um uh, have a weird conversation about how they could be making another Darth Vader, even though there was a lot more wrong with Vader than just his suit. Yeah. So I'm not sure where this true. conversation comes from. Well, I think, um, because she kind of mentions that it's it's the image of evil, which, I mean, it kind of is in the context of Star Wars, like a big life support suit, like they would have to make for her. Uh, Darth Vader, Darth Malgus, Warp Null, that. that Warp really Null, no, whoa. <laughs> oh, with obscure reference, but there really is no good guy who's in a giant metal suit. That I can, yeah. I can't think of any decent people who need like major surgery. Well, because whenever a good guy needs like uh, anything medical, it's like a replacement limb or something. It's never like the full suit. Yes, it's a nice little synth flesh. It's a, yeah, it's it's a it's a Luke Skywalker hand that has the synth flesh on it. So yeah, that will save our budget and our film. But yeah, uh, and then that's the end of 34, and on to 35, it has a uh, totally not ominous cover of someone who looks uh, quasi-Darth Vader-ish, with mm. lightning in the background. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> we talked a little bit before the recording, but uh, we'll get there when we get there, because I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, but then we, uh, this issue starts off on Coruscant. And uh, all the moths and everyone are lining up, and uh, Nina Clixt is there, who definitely isn't Cade's mom. That would be ridiculous. No, I'm still embarrassed that I didn't make that connection <laughs> until we started recording. Oh, uh, well, that's good. That's that's yeah. that's the best. That's the best part. Uh, but yeah, she's there with the moth, and the Sith are arriving, and I love the visual of the Empire on. Uh, large skitty, uh, cityscapes, especially Sith. Yeah, it's very, uh, it looks really cool with the Pelion Star Destroyer, it's just, like, plopped. Yep. It reminds me and of, of uh, the Indian Attack of the Clones. Was, yeah. Yep, and that's exactly what I was thinking, too, because they got the big, like, legions of stormtroopers, the Star Destroyers landed, although I'm pretty sure, like, one Pelion Star Destroyer is, like, 50 acclimators. Yep. <laughs> Because <laughs> the the Pelions are massive oh, ships; yeah. they're bigger than Star Destroyers, both like up and down and and lengthwise. And uh, Calixt mentions that something else is going on, which you know definitely there couldn't be anything else going on with those Sith, right. and and that Darth Crate isn't there. So yeah, Warlock's definitely up to nothing. No, no, definitely not. No aspiration. Uh, so we go from one capital of the Empire to the other capital, Bastion. And they're discussing whether or not Darth Crate might be dead or not. And Rowan Phil's getting the rundown by our two main Imperial Knights and then what, and one other one I do not recommend. Yeah, it's from uh, Ganner Rizod and uh, uh, Draco. Yes, the two and Terry's Draco. Lords. Uh, Ganner's not really that edgy. He's definitely the least edgy of the Imperial Knights. Besides Alzin. This is also true. Probably because he has a totally sick ponytail. Yeah. So he's really <laughs> laid back. It's also true. But, no, but they, uh, basically, they're discussing, like you said, Crate's death and, uh, uh, Fel sends the Murtaugh. 
Yep, the Mer Talisman as well. And uh, this is where it's kind of foreshadowing that uh, Fell is getting really ends justify the meansy. Yeah. And talking about how is there any weapon too terrible to use against the Sith, which is, I guess, an argument you could make, but probably not with the Mer Talisman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, what if I what if I just corrupt myself? I could go wrong. What if I just turned millions of people into mutants? Yes, very fun. Yeah, but uh, they send uh, Master Dare, who must be that third Imperial Knight standing there, to go and get uh, uh, Master Sind from Dak. Yes. Wait, who is Gander in a relationship with? Uh, oh, he's, I'm pretty sure he's in love with, uh, Alzen. And Draco's in love with the princess. Yes. Yes, okay, we got it. So they both, uh, are getting unrequited love. Yes, they're getting the Jedi can't help boner treatment, even though they're Imperial Knights. They're not Jedi. Oh, it's not so much that they can't get boners, it's just the people that they're in love with don't want to act on their boners. Well, the princess does with Draco. Gander's G G Gander's not so lucky. <laughs> and the... Yeah, that's true. Rowan Phil's just out to get Draco. So yeah, and then uh, but then he uh, Phil also mentions that if Crate is dead, then uh, this might be their best time to strike against the Sith. Which uh, yeah, that probably would be the best time to strike yep. at the Sith is when their supreme leader is dead. Almost all the other ones are just cannon fodder, except for, like, five. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then it's back to Kifex. We've had two just one-page kind of... I kind of like the the two kind of things with those two first pages, though. Like, the two different viewpoints of, like, uh, the Imperials learning about Crate's death and the other Imperials learning about Crate's death. Oh, yeah, me too. It's a nice transition. Because, like... Uh, Obviously, as we'll see later, Veed is ready to just, like, submit to that and just go along with it, and uh, Feld, like, he wants to, like, go back into action. Mm -hmm. It It's what... Everybody's playing politics. Very interesting. Po politics as usual. Yeah. So, ignoring the politics, we go into a bar fight. <laughs> yeah, this is... I, I really like this scene. It's really fun to see, like, this kind of, like, uh... Old West kind of stuff in, like, Star Wars, because Star Wars is kind of like a space western, so it's cool that uh, Cade was cheating at Sabacc, so these thugs are trying to beat him up for cheating, and they're fighting him off, and Sin is smacking people with a with a stick. And using the Force to make them lick mud off your boots. <laughs> <laughs> Which, oh, that would be... A, Sounds like it, it. Obviously, it isn't in either of the Kotor games, but it it definitely sounds like something that would be a Force persuade option in Kotor. Kotor two, especially. <laughs> Jump oh, did, my God! <laughs> yeah, Jump and I. Control pit. <laughs> <laughs> give me all your credits and kill yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, I think we mentioned this before, but I like how we get a bunch of different Star Wars languages and different uh, slang that's exclusive to Star Wars in the dialogue here. Like the leader, whatever, the uh, people coming out of the bar says Toplada, Banki, Donko, Jospi, instead of, like, anything that's English. Yeah, that's cool. That would be... I mean, I'm assuming it's Hatice. Probably. It, it sounds like it. Yeah. And then, uh... Very immersive. And then, yeah, and then it's nice that, uh, well, Cade's always saying Patisa, which is probably, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it, he says it all the time. It's, it's like his thing. Uh, and then, uh, Sin, he says Stang, which is basically just Star Wars for, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, I like, I like how they, it's how Star Wars obviously stays like PG 13. Of course. But then, oh no, the cops show up and they have little, they look like lightsabers, but obviously they're they're probably just like little like baton like stun batons. Yes, they're bots and stunners. Oh my! Either that or um, they're shotos. They're sorable. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, but no. So they have a. They have, it's, I don't know. Like I said, it's just like a cool, fun, just like bar fight. Yeah, which is, 
I love that this comes right after galactic scale politicking because you have like yeah, all this hey. really what's the word I'm looking for? Macro? Sure, we'll go with that. Uh, really like an almost intelligent sort of uh, thing going on with like just the grand scale of the entire galaxy. People manipulating one another. And then our protagonist is just like Cheating at Sabak. Junkie. <laughs> <laughs> just cheating at Sabak. Kate's just an idiot. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. He's uh, he's Han Solo with a lightsaber and his moral compass turned way down. Exactly. That's the best description you could give Kate. Um, he's just trying to have fun and get away from everything, and the galaxy's constantly trying to rope him in. Yeah, he literally just had a bad day, so he went to. Like we said earlier, at the end of the last issue, go go do illegal stuff to blow off some steam. Again. <laughs> and then he uh, he also smashes a cop's head into... I mean, it's probably just a pile of like squishy mud, but it looks like rocks. Of course. And then, then he force blasts away another cop uh, after she headbutts him in the nose, which is very unpleasant. Yep, just bleeding out of his nose after that. Uh, yep. Drya meets his his what? How are they related? I I don't I don't I don't think they're related. I think they just like previously know each other. You're just sounding. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure how they're related. I don't think it ever comes up again ever. So she's just gone. Oh. But uh, then Cade has a little force rage from uh, Force Unleashed two moment. Yes, and he whips out the old dark transfer that definitely doesn't look like Force Lightning. But uh, they get pinned between the one that Dry knows and Kate are like at gunpoint with each other, and then Dry steps and makes them stop, and then slips her some Vonk tech that probably knocks her ass out. Yeah. And that's all I have for that. Uh, Bastion? Yeah, back to Bastion. And then... um, A dark, shadowy figure who we definitely don't know who is talking to Rowan Fell about Cade's exploit and Darth Warlock. But who could it be? It's Aslan Ray in really shitty armor. <laughs> no, it couldn't be. I hate how it looks. But yeah, we cut we cut over to it. We cut back to uh, Kifex after they have their conversation at Bantha's like mansion. I, how the hell did Bantha get so much money? Because he has like a big ass house he with a full on like medical bay. He won the space lottery. Space lotto. Yeah. Uh, but no. So, uh, Cade and Jirai get back, and Cade as soon as he walks in. Uh, and yeah, there's Alzerin Ray, and she literally looks like a 1950s cheap sci-fi movie robot. <laughs> I was gonna say that, or like, oh, something Japanese that fights Godzilla. <laughs> that yeah, that could be too. Like if she was like 50 feet tall. Exactly. Oh yeah, and yeah, she's pissed off. She is unhappy because she was, she accepted that she was gonna die. And, and now and now she has to live her life as this ugly robot. Who's just consistently wanting to die, I think? Is she in constant pain or not? I can't remember. No, she's uh, not. Uh, no it's just that she can't feel anything. Some, it says, sometimes it still feels like I'm burning from the inside out. Uh, I'll never feel a cool breeze on my face or touch on... Or your touch on my skin, and sometimes I can't feel anything at all. I'd rather be dead. I mean, hell, I would be too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she's not very happy, and uh, neither is Bantha because or Drew because Cade lied, and then Bantha basically tells him, uh, "GTFO, buddy." Yep. And, and then um, Cade has to leave Kifex for a little bit. Yep, and then uh, 
It's at the Shafe's Palace on Kifex. I don't I don't know what that is. You've read the Republic comic. Is that in there? I don't think so. Gotcha. I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say no. Okay. Um, I'm assuming it's uh, something important on Kifex, obviously. And then, uh, so Alzen Ray's been waiting there for two days, and then uh, Ganner shows up to take his French fry waifu <laughs> it's, back to Bastion. It's okay. I would. You die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. Good guy Ganner. He would have let her die. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> um, but then we get some scenes of uh, Cade fixing up the uh, the Minoc with his boy with his buddies as the uh, as Bantha's kids look on really sad, and it's really depressing because they're little kids, and they're one of them is a literal puppy, so he's giving him literal puppy dog eyes. Wait, is this the cop that tried to arrest her? Maybe I guess maybe it could be. I think it is her. <laughs> okay. She's one of Ben's kids. Okay, gotcha. And then uh, they're all really sad about it because obviously, obviously, Cade's just pissed off. And then uh, he says to hell with the galaxy. And then they uh, they take off, and uh, Jiraiya's jailbait girlfriend looks on in tears. Although she's a cop, she obviously couldn't be jailbait. Of course. So. So, nope, he is on the up and up. Just doesn't have a chest. And looks 12. Mm. And granted, I, I, if I shaved, I would look 12 too, so. <laughs> Shaving Kate. I've, I've seen it. It's glorious. Kind of sad. Gloriously bad. Alright. Uh, next issue, we open to a really badass cover. The Pillion Class. Yeah, character. that... Along with all the, uh, I, I like all of the like little uh, design nods. Like obviously the Pelion class, just uh, Star Destroyer is just a new like Star Destroyer. Uh, but then we got the Hammerhead ships. I don't obviously I don't know the actual name of them, but obviously they're inspired from the yeah. Hammerhead cruisers from Kotor, which is cool. Definitely, because Star Wars technology changes very little over thousands of years. Well, let's see. Uh, from Golden Age of the Sith. To uh, those of the Jedi, it advanced pretty, pretty quick, and then true. from from Tales of the Jedi to Kotor, it advanced to modern day Star Wars, and then it's been basically that for <laughs> nearly four thousand years. Well, they thought they tried to do a transition, and then they were like, "Hmm, maybe people don't want to see flying tur- Tales of the Jedi." Yes, uh, that's true. Uh... Hmm. And we also had a nice little uh, medieval Dark Ages aesthetic with uh, the original Darth Bane comics. Mm-hmm. Oh god, that's right. <laughs> and then, uh, but no, this one opens up with a uh, with some Stacy stuff, and they are well, they're basically just like gathering up their fleets and everything. This is basically another version of the Mon Calamari stuff, in that I mm-hmm. really don't care about any of this. See, I like this stuff more because at least it has really cool visuals going along with it. That I agree with, and I do like Stasi more than like anybody in. Yeah, Stasi. I can I can do Stasi like uh, side trips. I, I like Stasi and like his supporting cast. Mon calls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. <laughs> um. So I I don't mind the Stasi stuff, and I like uh. I don't know. I I he's he's a very well written admiral character because. Like, whenever he's with, like, his troops and everything, he's very confident, but he still has moments of, like, humility and everything. Mm-hmm. I do wish that the Galactic Alliance conflict wasn't so far separated from the main conflict. <laughs> that is true. I, well, at the same time, I don't... I, I like Cade having his little escapade himself, but I think Stasi in his situation would be a lot more compelling if Cade was with them. Or even more yeah. characters with them, like so, like a if we had some of the Jedi Council with Stasi or something like that, to that nature. Well, uh, it's the Jedi Council, so they've got to sit. Yeah, they got to sit and hide in places. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, they're they're going back and forth, and um, they're talking they're, about it, it's... invading one of the Imperial worlds, or they're about to invade one of the Imperial worlds, and uh, yeah. 
and the uh, the Imperial Admiral or Captain or whatever is talking about how this is basically just a going to be a repeat of the Battle of Kamos, which obviously, as extrapolated in previous issues, is where like the Galactic Alliance basically just got like shit stomped. Yeah, they're trying to prevent that situation from coming again. Well, they're trying to prevent that, and they're also like testing Stasi fell is and the imperial that Rowan fell is sending in mm-hmm. in order to sort of like see what Stasi's willing to do and what he's capable um, yeah and then it goes over to the bearded uh I guess Admiral Pito and the uh original uh, Imperial Admiral that Stasi was talking with and he basically says that he's serving Emperor Fell, not the Sith. And the the, the Imperial uh, troops on there, then on the other Imperial ships, then just like, well, they basically just stage a mutiny. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. um, we kind of saw happen way, way earlier in the series, like in, within one of the first couple issues where uh, Fell goes back to Bastion and. Uh, there's only the one dude who's like, oh, turn him in, and then he just gets shot. Yeah, you, I, so, I remember that. Yeah, cause, so I like that. I like that, like, the two um, uh, parts of the Empire are, like, conflicted, and obviously there are going to be soldiers and stormtroopers and pilots and everything, and even admirals and higher-ups that are, like, they have conflicted loyalties. Yeah, it's not going to be uniform one way or the other. It's going to have, like, mutineers sprinkled in, people at least with doubts. On either side. Yeah, so they do, and then they do all that, and then we get proof basically phase. just yes, another proof phase, proof phase mail. But um, there is there's we have a few moral squabbles between Stasi and the uh, uh, the Imperial commander Rowan Phil. Yeah, because yeah, the. Uh... The Imperial is like, well, we're just gonna blow up all your escape pods, dickwad. And Stacy's like, whoa! <laughs> right, that's not okay. It's very immoral. We're not evil. But yeah, the, the, the Fell Empire is definitely definitely the good guys. Totally. Yeah. Well, that's the thing I like because um, a lot of people who I don't think have actually read like the legacy series, they think that like the Fell Empire are like good guys when like some of them are, like you'll get like uh I mean like I wouldn't say like the main couple uh Imperial Knights, the the big three Imperial Knights, I wouldn't say they're evil or immoral or anything, because like they're constantly wrestling with like well is like is the Emperor's will moral? Like should we do this? Yeah. It's and then we get that like nice juxtaposition, and then like with this Imperial Admiral, who's like, "Yeah, we're gonna shoot your escape pods." <laughs> yeah, the uh, Imperial Knights are like they're rumored to be like great Jedi or whatever, and they're like that's their reputation. But they claim to serve the light through the Emperor, and I think the Imperial Knights are like the best examples of moral Imperials, strangely enough, because the Empire and a lot of its admirals are. They're not like evil or like overtly malicious. They're yeah, not, but they're they're evil. willing to like compromise. Yeah, they're... certain things and like it like it's more like it, it's very more more along the lines of like um, what we were talking about earlier with Fell using the Mer talisman. Like they're very ends justify the means. Yeah, it's almost Thrawn like. Like they can be especially cold, but they're more tactical and efficient than anything. Yeah, yeah, that's like that's a very good way to put it. Yeah, but the escape pods are jettisoned, and all of the imperial ships blow up because they decide, "Hey, we're gonna blow ourselves up instead of surrendering, surrendering, surrendering to you." Uh, I don't have much more commentary that we have. Do you have anything so? I mean, not really, like, it's... It's pretty straightforward. It, it, it's just really straightforward, like, they're fighting the Imperials together, but they're also having, like, these internal, like, um, 
moral dilemmas, and then um, eventually Fell does like Emperor Fell calls Admiral Stacy. They do. I I do really like their exchange about how Stasi and Stasi's talking to Rowan Phil as if he were an equal, and Rowan Phil kind of like snaps at him. It's like, "Hey, we're not equals. I'm of the entire galaxy." And Stasi says, "I am the Galactic Alliance." <laughs> yeah, and uh, he, he kind of puts his foot down, and I really like how he stands up to Rowan Phil because none of the Imperials do it. And if, well, yeah, you, you gotta leave it to the. I guess, like, air quotes, like, rebel to stand up to the, to the Emperor. It's a I mean, nice change of pace, though. I, I really like somebody standing up to him. Yeah, I do like it. And I, I also like that, um, because their whole thing was they were going to capture all those Star Destroyers that blew up. And Fel is like, well, that that didn't work. And Fel then, uh, but then Stacy just, like, straight up says, like, you know, we probably could have done it if your, uh, imp- if uh, the Imperial Admiral, like, didn't if, if he wasn't such a dick, yeah, honestly. basically. <laughs> and then that's when, yeah, Fell snaps at him and says that they're not equals. Um, but yeah, no, he does. He, yeah, he says, I am the Galactic Alliance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they do come to terms, sort of, and compliment sort of one another. Um, yeah, and- well, I really like the. Like, e- e- like, like you had said, like it, it. Basically, they are equals because Daisy mentions that, like, he is the head of state of the Galactic Alliance until they can elect someone. So they are equals. Mm-hmm. And then, um, he, um, Fell says that, oh, it looks like you have a taste for power, Admiral Stacy. And then, like, Stacy just rejects it because, like, he obviously, like. He doesn't care for power. He's just trying to keep the Galactic Alliance alive as best he's as he can. Simply the best person up to the job. Like he's tried to kill himself several times. He doesn't care about staying in the position of power. Yeah, exactly. Whereas Rowan Fell definitely wouldn't sacrifice himself. I think if it came down. Oh to- God, no! <laughs> well, no, he would just sacrifice his double like he did in the first issue. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, um, yeah, I, but, I love how we start out with that. Like, Crate's like, all right, I killed this guy way too easily. Where's the real Rowan Fell? <laughs> and then, uh, but no, I like, um, his name escapes me at the moment, but his weak way, like, second in command says that they're all, oh, we're all friends again. Uh, and then Stacy retorts back with, uh, friends, no. Allies, for now. For now. Definitely. And then in the future, we'll see who is more dangerous to us our enemies, dot, 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 or our allies. And then, um, very nice cut exchange. over to, what was that? It's a very nice exchange. It's pretty badass, actually. Yeah, I re- like I said, like, Stacey is definitely, outside of, like, the main cast and, like, the Sith, he's definitely, like, one of my favorite characters. Oh, me too, definitely. Like, it's very nice when we have a smuggler, druggy Jedi as our main character. It's very nice to have a normal, moral, like, like Stacey is a, like, typical hero character. Yeah. So, it's like, so it's very nice to get that. It's like if everybody else was Karth, everybody else like <laughs> everybody's Atten, and then St- Stasi is Karth, and he's good. That that's yeah, that's a, in a yeah in a in a world of HK forty sevens, he is the T three M four. Stasi is a good. In a, in a world of Zalbars, he is the Hanhar. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't end up like. Hopefully he doesn't end up like Dark Side Zalbar. Oh God! Or even Hanhar. I've killed Mission with my bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then uh, issue thirty-seven has a very, very. This is uh, this is one of my favorite covers. Uh, it's got Cade against the uh, twin sunsets. Oh, mine too. It's very. It's drawn very well too. It's pretty artistic, actually. Yeah, it's really nice. Except how the the sky is white, not blue. Stylized, I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's very nice. And I, I like the design of Cade's, like, double barrel blaster blaster pistol. Oh, yeah, me too. God, he's such a, um, he's such a cowboy. Yeah, like, you get, you go, oh, you talk about Western vibes with the bar <laughs> fight. This is some big time <laughs> Western vibes. I'm just going to take the cover of this and play Good, Bad, and the Ugly. <laughs> um, but no, it opens up, and. Um, They're doing. The, the Wookiee. Old... Yeah, the old Han Solo. Yeah. Um, and it's the Wookiee. 
Aaron, that's not a Wookiee. No. Why did I think that's a Wookiee? I have it written down that that guy's a Wookiee, but no, it's a crew of, I think, pirates. It's not Bothan. That have... No, it's not a Bothan. It's maybe it's that that one Jedi Master. That's like that was Elzen Ray's Master. It's probably the same Cathar? species as him. Yeah, yes. Kind of I'm gonna say Cathar. Yeah, but go with that. Yeah, Cathar. He's harassing uh, Admiral Pelion. Yeah, pretty much. It's <laughs> literally just Captain Pelion. Um, but no, I think that Black Sun is what they are. It's them. Yeah. Him. Uh, I want to say Nikto. It looks like one of like the subspecies. Yeah. Uh, foreign and a Nautilin. So again, uh, no humans. A lot of. I, I think it's John Ostrander, honestly, because in his Republic comics, too, it, it's everywhere. You get a lot of species of diversity. Yeah, no, it is. It is really nice. Um, well, it, it honestly bothers me in the movies, too, because across all of the films, really, there's nothing but, like, human casts. And it's weird how you don't really get it until like you get into video games or comic books where members of the main cast or reoccurring villains can actually be aliens in this like really expansive Star Wars galaxy. Yeah, I I could really the only like thing in a game that really does it like especially well, I suppose, that jumps to my mind at least is um uh Nar Shadda and Kotor too. Yeah. There's nothing but aliens on Nar Shaddaa. Until you get to the refugees. The poor what? <laughs> the poor humans. Yeah, the poor humans on the planet of uh, aliens. I think, yeah, I think the only time you really run into humans on Nar Shaddaa in that game is if they're refugees. Yeah, there's even a Tordarian. It's, I mean, which is like pretty hard to render in that engine. Well, if you have the restored content mod, there's two Toydarians. Oh, yes, of course. Mm. Uh, a little off track, but uh, yeah. then the main cast show up, and they're looking all heroic, and... Vong Starfish. Vong Starfish, yes. There is a Vong Starfish. Of course, he throws it on the Quarren. <laughs> Slightly racist. Oh, no. But no, so they, they help them, and then... Uh, um, uh, definitely not uh, Captain Pelion is like congratulating like Kate and all them on saving them and uh, Kate says uh, no I'm taking your cargo and the <laughs> the captain says, but you're a Jedi <laughs> and you're a you're so... <laughs> uh, but then they um they steal from the Black Sun who was stealing from the Imperials by stopping and the they... Black Sun who was stealing from the Imperials yeah, they stop the Black Sun from robbing the Imperials so they can rob the Imperials so they can pin it on Black Sun. Because then Cade, he mind tricks the two Imperial officers there. Yes. <laughs> um, fortunately, he doesn't make them lick mud off his boots. No, he's considerably in a better mood today. Until he's not. Yeah, he's, well, probably because he's, he's robbing the Imperials. Yeah, until he's not, like two panels, panels later. Very true, but uh, no, and I think uh, Sin mentions that they've done this yes, yeah, six times they've done that. They have rescued the Imperials from getting robbed, only to rob them. And Delilah I need to put this here, but Delilah definitely wants new boots. It's a little snake she keeps for the rest of this arc. Also, Delilah and Sin are screwing, I think. Not sure. Mm, no. He's, well, he invites her to the his, and that he, she might take it up, him up on it. No, she's, she's, she's too in love with Cade. Of course, but jealousy is a Zeltron concept. So, yeah, but she's <laughs> not being jealous. She's just shooting down Sin because he's a stinky Vong starfish man. <laughs> Who apparently tries to date either women who look very young or Cade's mom. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no in between. No, God, no. Delia, Delia is she's too normal aged for him. Jail bait or milfs? Yeah. No, no people the same age as him. That would be ridiculous. Uh, but then it cuts back to uh, Coruscant uh, to definitely not Cade's mom. Yeah, Calib- and they're they're talking with an Imperial officer who Cade has obviously robbed. Of course, talking about it being Black Sun. Uh, well, yeah, of course, Black Sun. But, and uh, Veed is day drinking. Of course, with colleagues in the background, just chilling. Definitely yeah, she's just hanging out. Oh yeah, and then um, he, he's basically talking about not dying when he goes to meet Darth Maul because usually you don't come back from meetings like that. No, no, and then uh. Calixt also says that she's going to send Morgan Cord, who could not be Nina Calixt. That would be t- t- stupid. You've never seen them in the same room, but definitely. No, definitely. They're definitely definitely not the same people. And also her uh, uh, Calixt's do- other kid, uh, Gunnar Yeag. So, Yeag? Yeag? Yeah, Yeag? No, definitely not Yage. She's it's a human, Yage. so she has to... Is it really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, Yeg. No, I was I was screwing with you. I don't know. <laughs> Yeg. Oh, I said Yage. Yeg. Gunner 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 Yage. I guess I don't know. It's a weird last name. Her first name is Gunner. <laughs> yeah, she has a normal name. She has like an easy to pronounce first name, and then Yeg. Y a g e Yage. Gage. Hmm. Gage. Yeah, I think it would be Yage. I I, th- I think a G E makes the that that noise. I don't remember. My I I, I got C's in English class or something. <laughs> but this is a- um. But no. Um. So then we cut over to the the Arcanus sector, and it's what's his face from the uh, first time we're introduced to Kate. I don't remember what is his name again. I I don't remember. I, I always I always forget that he shows back up for a few is- for for like one one little scene. Where were? We? Yeah, I can't find it either. I think it's mentioned later. But it's yeah, it's fine. Special. But uh, then they are on um one of the black sun. They're pissed that people yeah. are taking his cargo, and they go to Tatooine. They do go to Tatooine. Um. Yeah, and they, basically, it's kind of like an episode one situation where they they just had to get to, to like that was the first place they could get to if they're without their ship exploding. Yep, <laughs> I'm just getting flashbacks of Lego Star Wars where I think Obi Wan's just hitting the hyperdrive with a. <laughs> <laughs> um, but whenever I see the Minoc, I'm always reminded of like if that if that pirate logo on it, that symbol, like the skull and crossbones, basically. If that's such like a galaxy known thing for um, Rab's pirates, why don't they just buy a can of spray paint? Honestly, <laughs> please come. Because like, yeah, because obviously, like, if well, well, first of all, if Kate and Jiraiya would just bother to wear sleeves, they would have their pirate symbols covered up. And his Sith tattoo. Well, I think that gets covered up because he wears like gloves. Oh, was it on his hand? I thought, like, I thought they were, like, on the back of his hand. Oh, that's right, he also has one on his right arm. On, like, his, yeah. I thought one of his arms had the sit He also has them on his hands. Oh, I see. Which, uh, again, well, he always wore gloves before anyways, so... Mm-hmm. Just wear sleeves, and no one will think you're a pirate. Of course. <laughs> well, and, and Sin is literally just in, like, a pirate vest. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Never um, But they're on the... They're on the Maz Eisley spaceport, and there's a Mune! Yep, I... I don't think Munes are ever drawn consistently, whether or not they have noses. But I, I like this version more, so I'll take it. Yes, no, it's a really good Mune design. And, um, basically, uh, he's only gonna pay Kate a quarter of the price for the stuff that he brought in. Because he's... His name is hot, and the merchandise is hot, because he stole it off materials. Which the Black Sun are now looking for because he stole it from the Black Sun who was stealing his material. And uh, he's done it five other times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bright, but you know, that's Kate and we 
Yeah, but he has to take it because who else is uh, going to buy it? Minus damages. Yes. He also shoots a waffle blaster in the dude's shop. <laughs> well, I think that's what he means for minus damages. Yeah. 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 That's why. yeah, yeah. Um, and then he kicks a womp rat on the way out. And Delilah can't get her poor boots. Oh. Yeah, I'm very upset. How expensive are Star Wars boots? Holy. On, on <laughs> the Rancor leather boots. Oh no! Just like Count Dooku. <laughs> um, but no, I like the little, I like the Womp Rat reference. Yeah, me too. Uh, because obviously Luke Luke Skywalker used to murder Womp Rats by the dozen. I like it because I hate animals. Ah, nice. nice. <laughs> you heard it here first. But uh, they come up with a quick scheme to get some quick cash, I guess. Or some parts. Yeah, because parts of their ship, I think. Yeah, because basically they're just gonna... Well, they're... They, they don't say it until they obviously get Delia up in the uh, the getup, but they're basically just gonna... Uh... They're making her a priest and getting some parts out of the other priests. Well, it's an Imperial mission. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So they're not really priests, it's like a mission trip in, in, in yeah. that sense. Um, but... Um... <laughs> Muzz, I think, who is the Mune? Yes, is uh, talking to the Vigo in the Black Sun and saying, hey, yep. Luke Skywalker is here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, his kid says, you know, oh, oh, don't worry about Muzz. I put, I put some fear into him. He doesn't even know my real name. I told him I was Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Completely changes it. And then, uh, but yeah, no, he... I, I love that conversation between the Mune and that Vigo. Um, uh, I, I assume there's a reward for supplying this fellow's name. There is. <laughs> it's Luke Skywalker! <laughs> I, I love the and here's your point, word. I don't kill you this time. <laughs> and here's a reward. I don't kill him. He's... I never make any Stupa. Stupa. Um, but then we cut over to Gunner, impossible to pronounce last name, and she's basically just, um, she's arrived at the Imperial Station, which is called Bravo, not Besh, uh, dumb little nerd, nerd course. problem that, that I noticed. <laughs> and I like that, it's the former palace of Gardella the Hut. Oh, I'd re I really like it too, actually, because, oh, uh, Gardella gets slept on, and... I really and like she, Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Or do and she's dead. Featured. Yeah, she's dead. <laughs> Jingo, Jingo um, fed, fed her to a crate dragon. Mmm. Delicious. Um, but no, she is... Uh, she's not happy because she's a pilot and she doesn't want to be there, but she has to use her black ops training that she has to... Ba well, basically, they just want her to find Cabe. And that she's going to meet up with yes. Morgan Cord, who definitely couldn't be her mother. Of course not. And uh, even though they look exactly the same, <laughs> they do look really alike. Like they they look more alike than Kate and her look like. Like they have. I don't like, think I would hope so. <laughs> Unless you well, a goatee. Yeah, well, we're going to get into that. So basically, they're talking her and uh, Gunner and the Imperial. Uh, commander are talking about the mission, and then we cut over to the group of bounty hunters that the Black Sun is gonna send with him as, uh, after Cade as well. Um, yes, and it's one blood carver and two Enzadi, an Enzadi couple actually. Yeah, pretty interesting. Is it a blood carver? Blood carver? Oh yeah, that does, that does says the blood carver. I. For some reason, I thought they looked different. I have a, I have an RPG guide that has them in it, and for some reason, they might have been drawn a little different in that. Oh, nope, they look exactly the same. I was thinking of a different species. Oh, yes, I see. I, but, uh... I don't see them that often. I can't... I must say I've seen them. They're probably one of those super obscure species that was, like, introduced in an RPG guide 30 years ago. <laughs> Honestly. Um, but no, and then you can see one of the Inzati is just brandishing a lightsaber. Interesting. It, wait, oh no, I thought it was Thin Nick for a second. Never mind. 
Continue. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> yeah, continue along and no thin neck. Uh, and then 38 uh, also has a really nice cover. Of the, it's just a nice action shot of Cade and Gunner. Mm-hmm. I, it, I kind of like how stylized it is. It kind of reminds me of like old or older comic books. Yeah, it's well, not, it's not like, more traditional. Yeah, and the only bad thing is Cade doesn't have his cool blaster. Of course not. He is uh, sleeveless though, so it makes up for it. Oh, well, he's always sleeveless, unless he has his jacket on, which isn't often. Uh, but then we get to immediately open up with the Anzati woman uh, eating a dude's brain. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> John Ostrander loves Anzati. I think he's... Uh, Anzati have been in everything he's written. Clone Wars, you had... Uh... Uh, Wolf Carco. Wolfie Carco. Full Fay Carco. Yeah. And then in this, you have this. Wolfe Carco for the Clone Boss stuff. Clone Wars, he had a shit ton of Anzati assassins. And then we had oh, that. yeah, because there's the Anzati assassins that fight uh, Opa Rancis. Yes. And he probably um, them all. <laughs> yeah. Um, however, is this the first time you get to see an Anzati eating someone's brain? Uh, or, do you, or do you get to see Carco doing it? Carco attempts it, but I'm not sure if I've ever seen him finish okay because i know he I, I know he does attempt it he attempts it on quinlan boss yeah 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 um also just a random side note um when i'm reading this and i'm reading the two anzadis they have like cheesy count dracula bleh, bleh, accents because yeah. <laughs> they they literally just they look very like vampire-y i'm gonna reread this arc with that in mind now <laughs> Yeah, like very rarely do I have like a like an overly specific voice that sticks in my head, but I always imagine they they talk like that. Dolly Nokia. <laughs> well, <flat is> <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we just lost all our Romanian viewers. Oh yeah, all, yeah, all forty of them. Sorry. <laughs> welcome, welcome to our <laughs> Transylvania ASMR. <laughs> Uh, um, but then we cut over to a Moss Eisley Cantina. The Moss Eisley Cantina. Oh no. There's a green rabbit. There is. I'm just going to ignore that. that <laughs> that's not there. I don't see it. I, I like that green rabbit. It looks like he's been hitting the uh, the crack cocaine. Yes, he has. He's it looks like he's been hitting that. Next. He, like his ears are like uneven length. One of them is like flopping down. They're like frayed at the ends, like an old flag. <laughs> and then, uh, but Kate and Dry are just hanging out at the bar, yeah, having some brewskis. And then uh, Dry is going off to chase. Oh, he's chasing after a Twi'lek that looks about his age. Good for him. Finally, someone you can't get arrested for. <laughs> oh my God! There's another. Ba- there's another rabbit in the background. There's oh, two. Oh no, I see him. Why would you have to oh, the same break? I just. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, sorry if you're not a fan it. of Jackson the Dumpy Rabbit. Ooh. I hate that. Well, see, that, 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 see, that's one of those things is, like, I'm totally fine with, like, the goofy green space rabbit, like, showing up in the background. I, I don't want that to be my main character of a comic book. No, I agree. <laughs> Like, put him in the background of a cantina scene, have him be, like, a side character that shows up and gets killed, but yeah, I, I don't need Jax in the space rabbit. Yeah, no, me neither. So, and then, uh... Then we get more Skywalker incest. Always incest. Almost. <laughs> so, yeah, uh... But at least it is not even implied that they could have ever, like, known at all. Thank even God. though... The, like the two most blonde people in the galaxy. Only two blonde people in the galaxy. There are three blonde people in the galaxy. These two, and then Morgan Cor. <laughs> yeah, and uh, no, because there's also um, uh, her dad is also blonde. Gosh, shit! You're right. Um, but yeah, no, they come up and she starts flirting with Cade, well, that's and they're. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're like actively, they're they're like actively flirting, and then uh, she roofies him. 
Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, she did not have a have a tough time uh, getting Kate out of there. He was already drunk off his ass, and she adds a little more, and he's good. Yeah, <laughs> he just face slams to the bar. Been there, mood relatable. <laughs> <I've seen laughs> <that. laughs> yeah, um, but no, and then as they're leading, the uh, three bounty hunters show up. And they're waiting to, like, stalk them. And it turns out, you're like, no, you can't kill them. Oh, the, uh, the rabbit bartender, he speaks. Oh, no, he does. I forgot about that. Left with a pale-haired human female. Was draped all over. Yep. And then Sin's like, oh, yeah, that's my boy. Okay, do you narglatch. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I hope for your sake that Blue doesn't get wind of this. She don't like you <laughs> that happy. And then Delia is just sitting there just absolutely just she's, she's sad. <laughs> she's crying. She just wants her boots. So sad. <laughs> and, and then the, another very kindly Jesus looking man shows up. Black Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it on an ad. Your mama's ass. <laughs> um, but no, so that's the Imperial missionary that presumably they were there to, like, meet up with, and mm. they have a discussion, and then it cuts over to the Jumlin Wastes! Who would ever go out there? It's not the best place for people. Oh, No, but that's where Gunnar Yage is. This guy with the rebreather reminds me of the uh, Imperial scientist, and I think it's Ghost Prison? Darth Vader goes prison? I could be wrong. Hmm. But I haven't um, read it. Moving on. Uh... But no, uh, uh, Morgan Cord and Gunner are talking, and uh... she's like, you did what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, um... You alerted them uh, off? Yep. And then, uh, I like Morgan's little quip at the end, why did I ever have children? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I love... How well, there's a little bit more later, but I'll talk about it right now. But uh, Gunner is really naive about the Empire because she's just a pilot, so all she does yeah. is like get orders and she has a little covert training. But her entire view of the Empire is so idealistic and like childlike, yeah, honestly baffling considering how much genocide they often commit. Yeah, well, and basically, like it. It makes sense because, like, obviously, growing up with that, and yeah, well, she's around Cade's age, if not younger, a l by a couple of years, I would assume. I think she's younger, yeah. Um, so obviously, she wouldn't have like lived through. Obviously, she wouldn't have lived through like the massacre at Osis or anything. Yeah, but by the time that would have happened, and the one Sith took over, like, she would have probably just been force fed propaganda like her whole life. So yeah, it makes it, it makes sense that she's really naive about it, like. Uh, but it is it is nice to get that like perspective of someone who's so like like you said like just naive about it like just indoctrinated into like the whole system. Mm -hmm. I I agree. Me too. Uh, but then uh, Cade wakes up, and uh, I I like the one little thing that uh, Gunner says that uh, Morgan Corn sounds just like her uh, like her mother. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what that could be. Hmm. Um, but no, they wake up and, uh, Cade tries to struggle against the stun cuffs, which then give him a nice little zap. I love the panel of him getting shocked. Like, the second Yeah, it, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't look like he's getting shocked. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I like Cade, he's just a dirty, sleazy scumbag, and ask if he gets to keep those after the party. Yep. <laughs> and, she, and she even says, you're pure slime, aren't you? But Cade is such a dick, I love him. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 he's meth addict Han Solo. Yep. <laughs> With a lightsaber. And he's buff. Um, but then we cut over to the, uh, very episode one esque scene of the sniper sitting up as a speeder's approaching. Just gonna shoot the pod racer. Yeah. Um. Even though the Enzati wanna eat Cade's brain, taste his soup, as they call it. it... Bleh! I want his soup. 
and Zadi are such a weird thing. It's they like... are. <laughs> Were they introduced uh, in in the Republic? Uh, I think. Yeah, yeah Jedi uh, Quinlan Vos Jedi and Darkness. I think was their first appearance with uh, Quinlan and both a Karko. I think that's the first appearance. I could be wrong. But John Oswald I, that, really likes them, so I would, I would assume so. Uh, apparently they first appeared in Episode 4, A New Hope, so they probably were in the cantina and just got retconned that they were Enzati. Yeah. But apparently they were first and identified as Enzati in Soups on the Pipe Smoker's Tail, which came out in 1995. Short story oh. written for... Oh, that was uh, from Tales from the Maz Eisley Cantina. Oh, cool. Hmm. Neato. I did not know that. I will have to go through and reread that one. But yeah, basically, they're just talking about, uh, you know, shooting them. Yeah. And then uh, we cut over to... I, 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 I just... Hey, Imp. Hey, Imp Chica. Want to see a trick I learned at the Sith Temple? It's called Force Choke. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the first time I think I've heard Choke said in like dialogue context. Oh, d- probably like it. It's and I love it. <laughs> I don't think I could it... have asked for a better situation. No, it's such a silly like phrase to say to someone. Yeah, because <laughs> even like saying force lightning is kind of silly. Which is it? Force lightning is said. Like I, I know it's said in like Plagueis. Mm-hmm. Force lightning or Sith lightning, where they refer to it, but just to hear force choke, <laughs> and then his but face yeah. too, and then hers was the grasping prayer. Yeah, and um, I, this this panel is they they really show it that these two do look a, like a fairly bit alike. They have like similar cheekbones, kind of like a similar chin. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously they're both blonde, but uh, yeah. With dark eyebrows. Well, that's think... like a normal thing, I guess. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, then then their speeder gets shot by the assassins, and uh, lead them to cover, and then they get pinned by the land speeder as the sandstorm approaches. Yep, because uh. Bleh, the Inzati are deliberately missing them. Bleh. <laughs> Draw the prey out. Yep, and then um, the soup tastes better. Yeah, I, I, I guess. And but then the uh, sandstorm comes in, and we get to my and, favorite uh, scene of this entire comic. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's it's so good. Uh, I don't care if he's a Jedi on the run. I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> and Sin is running away from. The Twi'lek, like, like her, it's either like her dad or boyfriend or no, it's her husband. Brother, <laughs> or her husband. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, and the Twi'lek like is saying, "I'll always love you, my Jedi prince." We were just meditating. Too oh yeah, too, too, too we were just married. meditating. Too, too young or too young, too married. You need a woman with more experience. Morgan Cord. I was just dreaming about you the other night. Jiraiya fucked Kate's mom. <laughs> Eh, probably. But uh, then they basically uh, I love it. go on about how, how much danger Cade's in. Then we cut over to the Imperial mission, where it looks like Delia is no longer sad. No, she's, she's being a good Christian woman. Mm-hmm, helping out all the poor people. Yes. And we get a Gran, which is nice. I like Gran. They're one of my favorite aliens. I hate how they look, but I appreciate that he's here. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he has like the thousand yard stare. With, yeah. Well, he has the three thousand yard stare. <laughs> oh, there's a issue too. He is. He's he's hidden up there, barely outlined. That's that's what I like. I like big crowd seeds in Star Wars because you're gonna get neat little stuff in the background. Yeah. Like there's a, a Solaston, and then right to his left, there's a Zabrak. I love it. Obviously. Delia is easy to pick out because she's pink with blue yeah. hair. <laughs> um, but then we cut back to the sandstorm and Cade has some really snazzy goggles. <clears throat> kind of looks like Dr. Octopus. That's exactly what I was thinking. And yeah. he's pulling up his his coat and Gunner has to use, like, I'm assuming, like, part of her shirt or something just yeah. as, like, a bandana. 
and then the uh, the blood carver hops out, and apparently he has like a like the it's or no, they don't pop out. They're like the they start fighting each other because they're grumpy at each other. But does the blood carver have like a saber, like a saber pike? I think so, because that's how much drama is still too. So I think he so. does actually have a lightsaber. And then the uh, Anzadi male, he has he has one as well, and they have a little fight because they're just arguing about like obviously the blood carver just wants to like kill them, and then the Anzadi want to do their weird vampire stuff. Blah blah. Yeah, they work together very. Yeah, and then we cut back to Coruscant, and uh, just smoking evil Sith temple. I love it. <laughs> yeah. If you ever, if ever were in doubt at where the bad guys live, it's the big Mayan pyramid with a like pyre on top. Yep. <laughs> um, I do like that though. Like it's it's very um, it's a different kind of architecture because obviously from whatever we see, like the ancient Sith, their tombs were obviously way more based off of like Egyptian tombs. Yeah, uh, it's kind of neat that the one Sith have even their own like distinct architectural design because like this temple to me it, it looks like a Mayan temple from like uh, uh, Central America. Oh yeah, no, definitely. It's sort of blocky and layered as a pyramid instead of like just streamlined. Yeah, and, and then um, uh... yeah, it's Veed, and then the Imperial Mission guy from way earlier in the series who betrayed them. And uh, basically, Veed is m- just meeting with Warlock, and Warlock is more or less just telling him that I'm the captain now. Is that okay? Yep. Because <laughs> uh, Warlock needs a regent for when he's not like around, I basically think... to be his like second in command. Yeah, I especially like how Warlock is drawn in this first panel. That's a close up of his face. He looks pretty intimidating, which is rare for like the sort of. Con- quiet, conniver type. But he's getting a lot more dialogue. I like it. Well, it helps that he has a pair of devil horns. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> um, but that's pretty much what goes on there, and then we have another really good cover for issue 39. Which is a lie. It's a lie cover. It's a lie. <sighs> but we'll get to really it. Good. Uh, but me so but we... Yeah, but we, it immediately opens up back on Tatooine, and uh, Gunner and Cade are just beating the shit out of each other because uh, Cade has a he had a breath mask the entire time. Yep, you can tell they're uh, <laughs> siblings. Yeah, I remember the one time my brother and I got into a fight because uh, <laughs> he had the rebreather in the sandstorm. <laughs> so relatable. Uh, but she has a blaster pointed right at his face. And Which then, is kind of silly. She's she's gonna she'll, she'll ruin the breath mask. Of course, very dumb. Um, but Heck. yeah, then Kate just I I like it because obviously no one else can see the the Luke ghost. So Gunner asks what he's staring at, and then he just says that there's shelter this way, and he follows uh, Luke's ghost to his old homestead. Which uh, this is honestly my favorite part of this section that we've done, like out of uh, th- this episode. I think is this my favorite part of it. Oh yeah, no, it's it's really good. Like it's uh, of course it's like a like a big cosmic coincidence, but like it's Star Wars and they're <laughs> out they're out on like the Dune Sea. So it's 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 cool that they they get there and obviously as they're going up, like Cage is like, "Oh, it's just an old moisture farm." Which I don't think Cage knows the significance of it. Well, he's about to fin- figure it out. Yeah. But, uh... Uh, they settle down, um, and, like, point guns at each other and then miss. <laughs> Cade shoots, like, almost on either side of her ears with blaster. With her blaster, but she has his blaster, yeah. And then she tries to shoot him, but he, he has, like, a recognition code, so his blaster only works for him, which is probably a good thing for a uh, smuggler to have. But then I like this part where they have the big argument uh, because uh, Gunner calls her father uh, or Cade calls, calls her father the butcher of Osis 
and immediately Gunner's like, uh, hero of Osis. And then, uh, Cade basically just gives her, like, the lowdown. Yeah, and, uh, it's sort of like, uh, fact check, like, back to reality, and she gets a perspective that's outside of the Empire, which is really all she knows. Yeah, and it, uh, brings me back to arguing with, like, like, her whole, like, conspiracy theory stuff, she's like, oh, don't tell me the Jedi were all innocent, they sponsored the Yuzhan Vong terraforming plan. That plot destroyed worlds and turned innocents into Vong spawn. Yet you Jedi fanatics went into to war to defend them and dragged the Galactic Alliance into it with you. The war and what happens afterwards was all your fault. It it just reminds me of like arguing with like Empire fanatics <laughs> who actually like believe that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh yeah, Palpatine was preparing for the years of Vong. Yeah. But I love Cade's uh initial retort of uh you imp moron. You imp moron. <laughs> Yeah, and he basically gives the lowdown and gives, like, his whole backstory on how, like, he watched it die. And then we get a little bit more uh, to the massacre on Osis, where, like, when he first woke up, like, it was, like, just blasts from the temple. And then he woke up as his friends were getting cut down. And, uh, of course, the younglings got killed, too. So, Which I do... I, I, like, I like the revelation that she has, but I don't like how fast it happens. Because she's essentially been indoctrinated her entire life with this sort of propaganda, and then just takes like one conversation for her to completely switch gears. Yeah, well, I like at the end, even even like when she's like getting up, like she's, um, she's still trying to justify it that like, oh well, her dad can't be bad because he was just following orders. Yeah, and she's talking about how, how uh, he wasn't the same after Osis. Mm-hmm. So, um, basically, then they hear something coming in, and then uh, obviously it's the three bounty hunters coming back in, and then we cut over to uh, Jiraiya and Morgan. Definitely not post coitus. <laughs> this both laid up. <laughs> um, but no, they're basically just having a conversation on. Uh, I think the uh, Gunner have and everything. <laughs> well, it's either that or post. Um, well, the last line or... is, I like keeping my options open. Can they use a good pirate? And then Morgan Court says, depend on how good the pirate is. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, probably pre, pre-coitus. But then we wake up to a, um, probably my f- mm, favorite Cade dream sequence, Force Vision, whatever it is. And uh, I, I like how nonchalant Luke's ghost is. He says, come on, Kate, on Peru is calling. It's supper time. <laughs> Me too. Um, th- th- this is my favorite vision so far. As well. Yeah, and it's it's also very interesting how uh, Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen just also call for Kate to come. Luke! And just, Kate! Kate! <laughs> uh, but no, then they... Because Uncle o- Uncle Owen says the condensers over on the South Ridge are going to need looking at tomorrow. Are going to need looking at tomorrow, boys. And uh, living there, and uh, I I do want to go back and real, real quick and say that I think one of my favorite bits of dialogue here is, uh, he says, "Where am I? Am I in for another like I'm in for another lecture, right?" And uh, Luke explains this is where he grew up, and he says. And I prefer to think of these as conversations. <laughs> yeah. It's a very Jedi Master thing to say. Um, but no, they have like the little um, conversation and Luke kind of even like he kind of shits on Kate a little bit because he's like uh, I'm I, how, how, so tell me, how did you end up in locked in binders by someone who has no force ability? <laughs> and then Kate just, like he looks pissed off. He's like eating uh, some kind of, like, space fruit. Oh, shut up. Tricked me. Oh, tricked um, me. Like you tricked Crate and Murph. Yeah. yeah. And then they teleport, and Aunt Brew and Uncle Owen are... Uh, crispy. Uh, crispy. Very crispy. <laughs> Again, looking like me after the 4th of July. Yep. <laughs> um, Yankees. And he, he gives them the, uh, the lowdown on how... Like, they were killed, and, you know, he did, like, they basically just, like, died for him, and 
he buried the only parents he ever knew, but he couldn't give in to grief or vengeance, so he followed Obi-Wan and joined the Rebellion and had time to grieve for them later. Which really outlines the difference between the two of them. Granted, I don't know how Luke would have handled things if he were younger, as young as Cade was in that situation with Cade, but being... Well, it's Luke is always going to have an, in the the in his favor is that he's going to have Obi Wan. Yeah. Whereas Cade essentially lost like he, everything. Yeah, he lost everything. Well, so did Luke, but like he, it, it's still in a very different way. As like Cade was also there to witness it, like as it was going down, like he like he was describing to Gunner, like he had to see and hear and feel all those people die. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Cade kind of gives him some more, or Cade, Luke gives Cade some more, like, destiny stuff, like, destiny speech, because he mentions that, like, if he had been with uh, Owen and Brew when they died, he would have been killed, too. So, he had to go a different path. Yeah, um, Cade, I think, is a lot to deal with, but Luke is right in how he's supposed to be handling the situation instead of mm-hmm. whatever the hell Cade is doing. <laughs> Well, and Luke, Luke basically summarizes it purpose, or perfectly. Uh, your lack of control of your emotions, your pride, anger, and pain have made you lash out against everyone. You live in a constant state of revenge. You push everyone away. Look what you did to your uncle and aunt, to your cousin, Anna. You lost it. Your rage took over. That's not the Jedi way. And then Aid basically says that anyone who's not with him is against him. And Luke says that's a very Sith way of looking at it. And then he ba- he basically just drops a big like 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 a, like a truth bomb on him and says, "You're not the only being in the galaxy who's lost somebody they loved. This is about the choices you're making. It is time to move on with your life." And then Cade tells him to shut up. And then they have a fight, and it's awful because. Luke's lightsaber is blue, blue, which they probably did to have the juxtaposition of having two different colored lightsabers, but then you should have just given Luke uh, the um, Anakin lightsaber hilt, and that would be fine. But no, they give him the episode 6 lightsaber hilt, but it's blue. And And, (laughs) and to make it even worse, they gave him his awful episode 6 bowl cut. I don't mind his hair. I know you hate it, but... <laughs> yeah, dude. Nobody can watch episode 6 and tell me that they mind Luke Skywalker's hair. He has bangs. <laughs> um, but they do duke it out, and... Um... It actually um, end with a straight fight. It uh... They kind of come to terms with each other and deactivate the well... lightsabers. Well, the thing I really like is that the whole time is, like, Luke is, again, he's dealing out, like, like, how, like, Kate is basically acting like a Sith. And even hating the Sith just makes him feel more dark side. And then Cade yeah. says that they're just tools, and then Luke says, no, that you're lying, that's how you're justifying it to yourself. And that's what other people have uh, chosen to believe. And, um, I know you haven't read it, but that becomes a big thing in the, uh, NJO series with uh, Jason Solo and how he comes to kind of view the Force later in that as well, who obviously also fell to the dark side. Oh yeah, that's pretty interesting. I know um, it's complicated. It is. Um, but Kyle preaches the same thing. He does, but... It, it takes a really specific mentality to be able to pull it off. It, yeah, it really does, because it's not... Again, it obviously in the video game you can do it, but it's not like in Jedi Academy, like, Kyle Katarn isn't doling out Force Lightning everywhere. You never see him use it. You only ever see him use his lightsaber. I don't know, he'll use Force Lightning, Kate. Oh, really? I'd rush, rush through the mission where you work with him on that one you, ship. You just spammed Force Lightning and killed everything. <laughs> Probably, because it's just a tool! Yeah, it's just a tool. Uh, he uh, but yeah, no, I... I, you, I mean, you're right, like, it, it eventually comes and, like, he says... Like Cade, I'll I won't fight you. And then Cade says, "Yeah, that's a bad idea because I'm I'm grumpy." And then Luke basically gives him like the Empire Emperor speech. He says, "Well, then strike me down with all your anger, 
and your hate completely your journey to the dark side go and and then go join the sith you're almost one now and he almost does it and then he pulls away his lightsaber and can't because he just wants to be left alone <laughs> just leave me alone <laughs> Which I think is probably the most compelling arc in Jedi gonna have because it's very relatable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and and Cade does go on. He's like you know, he, that he's not a Jedi or a Sith or he's not like his father or your father or you. He yeah, he just wants to be left alone. And then Luke just tells him, "You're not gonna ever be left alone. You're stuck where you were seven years ago, Cade, alone, adrift among the stars, high above the open grave of Asith, waiting for death." Continue as you are, and this is your future. Even when you think you have lost everything, there is always more to lose. Is this what you want? And it's a vision of Cade standing over everyone he loves, and they're all dead, and he's a Sith. It, Full on Sith. With a really shitty haircut. Yep. Oh, Cade, hair Cade. The, the juxtaposition of blonde Cade hair with the red Sith is really bad. And he still doesn't have sleeves. And he still has his stubble. He needs to shave. <laughs> yeah. Still no sleeves. Though. Still uh, no sleeves. He'll never have sleeves. And then Cade says that that's that's not what he wants. And then Luke says, "Then decide what you do." And then he wakes up to uh, bleh, the vampire. <laughs> anxiety. He had his brains. And. Uh... The Anzadi female is straddling him in a very non vampire way. Sucking the blood out, and then he just... <laughs> I, I don't know how he manages to pull this off, but he kicks her in the face, even though she's straddling him. <laughs> yeah, don't think about it too hard. <laughs> and then he force pushes her away, and then... I love the fight he has with, like, the, the male Anzadi, because the, the male pulls out a lightsaber... And deflects one blaster shot from Cade. Or uh, it kind of looks like he does. And then... Um, yeah, he does. I, I have yeah. blank, too. Um, which probably, on his part, was just more luck than anything. Honestly. And then we cut to... Uh, 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 Jiraiya and Morgan Cord, and they take out the Blood Carver by... Uh, or they start fighting him. And then we get uh, another nice little cover of issue 40. See, I, with this last still, I do think it's a lightsaber. Pike. It, it... Why does the this blood carver dude have a lightsaber pike? That's a very obscure weapon for even a Jedi to have. <laughs> he is already has a blue lightsaber, too. Yeah. Um, just all take but, yeah, no, but then issue 40, again, it's a really nice cover. Uh, but Morgan Court is not dressed anything like she is in the previous issue. Nope. <laughs> she, uh... No, she is not. She has a cool cape, though. She a cape would like be wizard. Mira, actually. Especially yeah. with the little poison dart gauntlet. I mean, maybe with that, but yeah. Mira dresses... Oh, you're talking about how she normally dresses. Yes. I thought you were talking about for the cover of issue 40, and I'm like, uh... No. <laughs> no. But no. she does have a cape. A cape would be pretty wizard. Do not understand where this is coming from. I, I don't know either. Issue 40, man, it's just got that cover. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, we immediately open up, and, uh... Yeah, she just pulls a mirror and just shoots the blood carver right in the neck. Uh, I love his little line. It burns. Poison? Deadly. <laughs> then you die too. <laughs> may my blade be sharp. May I sculpt a new fate for my enemies. And then, yeah, uh, Sin kills him by basically cutting both sides of his throat with uh, a couple of long razor bugs. And then he says, uh, "Admit it, you love me." And then she says, "At the moment, yes." And then they fucked. And and that they probably did right there while Kate and yep. Gunner were finishing off the Anzadi. But I, I love I, I love the um the little exchange between the Anzadi and he's talking about how his wife will never forgive him. Why? For dying in the sand like a gaunt? Gaunt. <laughs> There's a lot of obscure species they have in this dialogue and I love it. Well I'm assuming like a gaunt is it's it's probably like the equivalent of like a pig. Probably. They the uh Dryad calls Kate a 
Narglatch earlier. Which also yep, loved. yep. Um, but no, they have their they have their fight, and I I love how cocky the Anzadi is. He's like, oh, surprised! I took this off a Jedi, I hunted and killed. Now we're equally armed. And, and then Cade pulls his lightsaber. Look, immediately kills him. <laughs> First <laughs> strike just carves his chest in half. Yeah, well, only difference between us then, Patissa, is skill. He's immediately dead. And then, and then his wife is like, no, my husband. Bleh! Bleh, my husband, bleh! <laughs> um, and then Cade knocks her out with, I'm assuming just like a force push or something. Probably. Oh, oh no! no. She, gets shot. Back, she ends up back on top of Cade. And then, oh, it's a stun bolt. Yeah, she gets shot by a... Uh... Forgot, forgot my blaster was set to stun for you. She gets gunned down by Gunner with a stun gun. Stun gun, Gunner, gunned. <sighs> stun gun. And then, uh, Jirai and Cade and everyone meet back up. And, uh... You first thing that Gunner ever says to Jirai is, uh, "You a pirate or an overgrown womp rat, and you're using illegal weapons." So. Yep. <laughs> oh, here, here's another one. Chica, I seen creedles with less sand in their britches than you. <laughs> uh, creedles are. I, I don't know if we did it, but I've killed many a creedle in Star Wars Galaxies on Tatooine. No, we went to Dathomir, I think. He killed Night Sisters. Did. Indeed. Oh. Uh, but yeah, no, then they all meet up and they're talking about how uh Gunner talked to a moth and has the moth leaking shit now because she's Kind of a dumbass. So now they gotta, yeah. now they gotta go see them all. Well, uh, or the Gunner uh, and Gunner and Morgan do. Yes, and the others are gonna go look at the uh, Black Sun leader. I can't remember the name. Mm-hmm. Rank. And then uh, uh, Kate asks for a uh, goodbye kiss. No tongue. He promises. Brother and sister, by mm-hmm. the way. Um... Brother and <laughs> it's fine. It's just half brother. <laughs> It's totally okay if they have different, uh, oh, they fine, have different man. fathers. It's totally fine, yeah. It's not like Luke and Leia where they're full blood related. Mm, twins. But no, it's it's yeah, no, it's definitely still weird. But yeah, the womb wasn't always shared. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not okay, but it it makes for good comedy because Star Wars incest. It's funny. Yes. And then uh, I love the thing Jirai's. Oh, she is kind of cute. And Kate, yeah, not really my type. What are you talking Come about? On. She's female. Female huts are your type. She ain't a Hudson. She's a ranker. Love it. <laughs> so they go back to the assassin ship and are heading on their way back to the uh, Black Sun leader. And the Vigo, that's what it is. It's the rank. Uh, Anzadi's basically talking shit and being edgy goth TikTok user, whatever the hell. And they're talking I mean, about basically. Like, yeah. And then we cut to Delilah Blue, who is a missionary right now, but pulling a gun on a priest or a mit- yeah. another missionary. Which, I mean, I really like this scene with the because Delilah, Delilah, like, barely gets any attention, really. Yeah, she never, like, this is really her only, like, like adventure. And, and I, um... I do honestly like it. You know, it's nice, because basically, like, he's just like, well, if, you know, I, if I call the authorities, they'll just kill you. Yeah, and he just, honestly, just offers her help, and I think my favorite bit of dialogue here is where he's like, you're not really Astral Veo. I've met her. Who are you? <laughs> because of the <laughs> fake name that she gave me. Well, it's just funny that yeah. it's because she, she picked the only other like Imperial missionary that she ever knew. It's... And then, of course, this dude knew her. Yeah. Um, 
it's really wholesome, actually. I really like it. And she's crying all the time, and she's having to deal with Cade's bullshit all the time. It's nice to get her to. It's nice having her get some. Very nice. You know, it's 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 just nice because he 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 literally he just like talks her back up, and he's like she's all upset, and she's talking about how no one gives away anything for nothing, especially not uh the emperor empire to a pirate like her and he literally just says well you have more more worth than you think and then he basically just agrees to give her the ship part that that they need yeah and then Kaden, the, the good of the empire well of the imp, imp, like the imperial mission yeah <laughs> um but no then Cade and Drya are in the assassin ship and they're on their way to deal with the black sun vigo and then Caden, uh, <laughs> sorry, I read Caden that is, like again. Which one? Oh, what's a hack the system? No problem. Computer calls me daddy now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, fantastic character. And then they get to uh, Caden. I think this is really the first time that uh, Caden Morgan get to talk. Because they don't really get to talk, because I think their only other interaction is when she frees it, help, helps to free him from the Sith Temple. Yeah, and that was, she like dips almost immediately after. Yeah. Yeah, they don't get along very well. No, they do not. Um, uh, and Cade's like talking about like, well, you were never my mother, and then she, just, no, are we having abandonment issues? <laughs> just messing then... with the wrong man. <laughs> And then he says that Rav, the the evil pirate man, looked after him after him better than she ever did. And the evil pirate where man was got she... him addicted to drugs. Yeah, and then asked where she was when you know his dad died. Um, she says that uh, the Sith were manipulating the war, or she tells him that that she knew that. And then, um, yeah, she basically says that yeah, she could have told Cole everything, but she was loyal to the Empire. But she said she didn't know that it was going to be a massacre. Oh, yeah, she That's thought it was going to be a peaceful surrender, but she still had, like, information, so she's basically just, like, been building herself up and doing all that stuff, but um, even though Cole knew what she was, he still loved her, and she loved him. Um, but I was going to say, when he mentioned that Rav looked after me better than uh, Morgan ever did, it reminds me of, like, in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, it's like the the worst <laughs> timeline of like if Yondu wasn't a really good dad. Yep. <laughs> is basically Yeah. Is basically just that. Like that's what it reminded me of. Yeah, me too. <laughs> he might um, be your father, but he ain't your daddy. And yeah, Rav definitely wouldn't have done that. <laughs> he would have fucking dumped Kate on the, the blowing up planet. Yep. <laughs> See ya. Um, but then we get over to Gunners reporting back to the Moth, who has the weirdest kick I have ever seen. That is a. It's a very high kick. It's, it's impressive because she looks. She, I mean, she's she's got like gray hair, so she's got to be like a little older. So that's pretty impressive. She's still in shape. I like it. Yeah, she. Another that's milk. probably uh, milk. Another, impressive. A fine addiction to my collection. <laughs> um. So she gives, they have a brief break after she's confronted with the information. She basically spills, spills all of the dirt she has on uh, Nina Calixt, who is also Morgan Cord, by mm -hmm. telling her that she's Morgan Cord and she was married to Cole Skywalker and that your sister's with uh, Cade and your mom also Morgan Cord and. <sighs> Gunner just flat out denies all of this, and then the moth is shot in the stomach. And she's and dying, and basically just gives her an evil villain motivation to uh, just use everything she knows about Kalix now to ruin her life. Of course. And then we cut back to the Inzati ship, and um, she's uh, also poisoned by the Inzati is by she's poisoned by Morgan. So basically they're holding her more or less hostage um to help them deal with the Vigo who is sitting on this big space station in like a lazy boy recliner. 
It's just the middle, and, like, there's nothing else around. Yeah, it's like, it's like the Death Star throne room, but even, somehow even more empty. Yep. <laughs> and apparently he's facing the door, because then Cade and uh, everyone walk in, and they're literally, like, he he's just straight up lightsaber right in his face. He just teleports in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> Teleports in front of you. Nothing personal. <laughs> so, uh, Cage tries to cut a deal with him, and Morgan promptly shoots them. Uh, shoots him after the deal is made, because he definitely would have kept it. Would not have kept it. Yeah, and then Cade gets very angry at her, and Force Lightnings her. Yep. Um, uh, and then... Dry is like, no, stop! You're shocking my milk. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop. Uh, let me get one more lay in. And then Cade says that that's not who he wants to be. And uh, Morgan obviously is going to try and reason with him, but he basically just tells her to like blow it out her ass. Yeah, basically. And I, I, he makes a very good point of how like. Um, you're a survivor, after all, above all else. You're nothing to me. And then they give the antidote to the, uh... Anzati, and apparently it doesn't work, because she also, like, passes out. Oh, no. The, the, the antidote is, like, straight up, like, death juice. For, oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, Morgan just kills her straight up. Nice. I actually really like that scene. Um, then we come back to Coruscant, back in the Sith Temple. Which I really like the shot of of uh, Moff Russ and uh, Darth Warlock standing with the sun in the uh, ground or background rather. Yeah, except uh, Warlock's gonna ruin his eyes because he doesn't have any sunglasses, and he there's no way he's not directly staring into it. That's okay. He has black tattoos around his football. Oh, player. okay, yeah, okay, nice, nice. <laughs> I, I get you. And his eyes already look sunburned. I think it's okay. <laughs> Um, but basically, um, uh, Warlock is telling him that the Imperial mission is going to be dot 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 in bold modified, and that their missionaries are going to be taught the Sith code and Sith values, which then they will teach others. And then um, Russ was under the impression that the Imperial mission would get to uh, continue as they were because that's what Crate told him. Um, and he has to speak with Crate, and, uh, yeah, Warlock tells him, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I speak for Crate. By yeah. the way, we're doing crusades now. Yeah, by the way, uh, all your nice people who helped with the poor people, yeah, they are now evil. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and then, uh, Veed comes in and he's like, oh, did you just come from your meeting? How did it go? Uh, did it go well? Uh, no. No, it no, didn't. No. <laughs> um, being very curt with everybody. Yeah, and then we cut back to Tatooine, we, and uh, smiling. Yeah, she's happy. Which is nice to see. And then um, it looks like they've repainted the uh, Enzati ship, which again begs the question: Why haven't they painted the pirate markings off their ship? Because they even painted the pirate markings onto the Enzati ship. It's not about Rav. It's about the family. It's not about Rav. It's about having a cool symbol on your ship. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Alright. Um, um, but yeah, then basically he's... Um, Sin asks, oh, where are we going? Or Delia asks that over the comm link. And uh, basically, Cade just says, uh, any place that isn't here. Which, if I ever even set foot on Tatooine, that would be my exact 100 percent uh description of where i would want would, would want to go uh, i don't like the heat uh, you don't can you can't deal with like 90 degrees could you imagine going to a desert planet with two fucking suns no uh i would not but uh i would thrive on hoth i would freeze on hoth. <laughs> um but no then uh issue 41 uh not a lot to say about it but it has a really cool cover yeah, it does. That's about all I have to say about it. Yeah, it's about uh, it's basic. <laughs> I'm I can guarantee you when this was coming out, like monthly or semi monthly or however they did it. I'm assuming it was monthly. Um, this was definitely like a filler issue. Oh yeah, definitely. 
Like, they were like, oh, we just finished up that cool Tatooine arc. Uh, what should we do now? Oh, how about these Mandalorians that nobody remembers? How do you want to go through this? Um, basically, there's uh, another Mandalore who was an Ordo. Churnin Ordo. Uh, he has pretty cool armor, though. Is that a KOTOR reference? Oh, I agree. Uh, I don't like his double antenna, but uh, his color scheme and his helmet are pretty cool. Yes, I agree. I do like the double antenna. I don't mind. Oh, yeah, I don't care for it. It looks like uh, goofy, like, uh, and, like, it, they literally look like antenna if you have two of them. Yeah. Um, but basically, they're fighting against the Empire, and really, the story has no bearing on anything, and I don't think it ever comes up again. Oh, it's great. I'm so glad. Do uh, you have any notes? I don't like it all. No, none at all. I have nothing to say about this, because... Uh, is that Dash Rendar's ship? Is that it? Yeah, uh, it, it's a YT whatever model. Looks like it. Um, okay, that's on my commentary. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, it's a YT twenty four hundred. I think is the model. But yeah, no, that's that's it. Um, but I really don't have any commentary on this. There's a really weird looking like smooth hut. Um, I don't like the man the ex wife's helmet. Oh, I, I like that one. I think all the Mandalorians in this era have pretty cool armor. And the, I just don't understand the point of, like, three bends on top of their eyes. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the comic, uh, Mandalore gets a really cool new set of armor with, like, the black and gold color scheme. I think it's a really solid black color. Or that's a really solid color scheme. I agree. And I also like the meaning behind the colors. Oh, yeah, that's uh, the Black for Justice, Gold for Revenge, yeah. Hunting the Mandalore, are we? Or whoever that is, if it's his ex-wife, or if it's the Mandalore, or whatever. I don't think it ever comes up again. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, but no, that is the eight months, and uh, that is the end of... Um, the legacy part four of you. So overall, like what were your thoughts on like this, um, this section of the comic? Obviously it, it dragged a lot for the first couple issues. Uh, it has some of my favorite moments, Kate and his crew. Like overall, yeah, their, like, the parts we've done. Their, their development is really good. I like, like we mentioned earlier, I like the interplay between the two different or the not interplay, the dichotomy between the two factions of the Empire, of, like, the Fell Empire and then the Sith Empire. I really like those, how we get the two different juxtapositions. Mm -hmm. um, this I, I like Stacey. Oh, me too. Like, like, I can, like, his side stories, like, I, I'll read those happily. Mon Calamari, like we talked about earlier, I really didn't care for those first two issues, 30, or those first three issues, 32, 3, and 4. Um, but then, yeah, once we get back to Cade doing his stuff, like, even just when, like, the main cast is doing, like, fun little side stuff, like, like when they're having, like, a bar fight, like, it's fun. Oh, you know, it's it's definitely fun. It's just, I wish they would spend more time with, like, Warlock and, like, move things along with him instead of focusing on long calls. Or, well, like, the weird filler stuff uh, yeah, that's, that's true. I'm pretty sure at uh, 40, all the way to the end, is um or 40 42 to the end it really ramps up good uh well Warlock is one of my favorite characters so far and i'm really interested to see what goes on with him and the other sith and uh not that it's not fun i really enjoy it but uh it, so far Cade, after the whole uh aslan ray crate situation they've kind of just been laying low and doing Small fun stuff, but I mean, I still enjoy it. That's good. Yeah, I'm. I can. I could definitely see like when they were sitting down to write like the next arc after they um defeated Crate. Like, I I'm pretty sure they were. They had to have been like, well, let's do like a smaller scale thing, like a more interpersonal uh thing versus like Cade like trying to kill like the big bad of the series. Yeah, I I think it works well. Oh, it, if nothing else, it helps develop, and I like that we get uh, some more time with the live. 
<laughs> yeah, like 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 I said earlier, like she gets this is I think it, it's her first and as far as I remember, uh, it's her only little side story, and it was nice and wholesome. I think so too. And then we have that juxtaposed with uh, Dariah banging Cade's mom and <laughs> definitely. Cade, and Cade making passes at his half sister. Mm, love it. Thank you, Star Wars. Very cool. Yeah. Well, at, le- at least the nice thing is it's not like a reciprocated thing. Like Cade is just a horny dude, <laughs> and 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 at, at least Gunner isn't like reciprocating. Like she's not flirting back. She's like, "You're fucking gross, dude. Stop." Even then, I think the flirting is more Cade trying to get on her. It's working. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Um, no fool and, and yeah, and for yeah, for some reason, I I. I can't imagine anyone on the Minox smells especially good. Oh, definitely not. Definitely. Uh, maybe Delia does, but... I, Cade and Dry Sin, I feel like they're the kind of dudes who shower two times a week. The Twi'leks definitely don't have a problem, at least. True. Yeah, that, that Twi'lek... Yeah, I like, I like how Dry gets into shenanigans and Cade gets into shenanigans, and yeah, everyone gets their own little thing in this and dry just yeah, happens so. to be uh <laughs> being a horn dog <laughs> dry can just settle down it's good he can settle down with his twi'lek after her and her husband get a divorce <laughs> um but dry as far as uh, oh yeah definitely but as far as that goes um it looks like the next episode part five whenever that is will take us from issue 42 to 50 of Legacy, and then after that we'll have uh, one more episode to read. Uh, well, technically it was a mini-series, but Legacy War, it's a thing that... War is like a thing that like um, Dark Horse did to promote like big stuff happening in their comics. Like I think there was also Knights of the Old Republic War, and there was probably other stuff going on with that as well, with their ongoing series. Um, so we're... Um, two thirds of the way through. Almost there. Almost there. A year and uh, two weeks in the making, and we are four parts into it. Um, <laughs> but as far as that, at the moment, of course, um, at the end of this podcast, I guess to let a, a little preview in on what else is going on besides that, um, is me and a third person being introduced to the podcast will be doing a another video uh tbd well we already have it determined it's just a matter of recording it um so be on the lookout for that but other than that um any closing words from you tristan i'm good i have nothing else to say i'm good <laughs> uh, hopefully awesome we'll be able to wrap this up soon and maybe move on to something else uh that's a very good thing to leave on so with that we will see you the next time that we see you goodbye